water. Earth. Fire. Air. For the longest time, the four nations have lived together in harmony. Under the wise leadership of Avatar Roku, the world has experienced an era of peace and prosperity unlike any other. But with the recent death of Avatar Roku after his volcanic island erupted, members of all four nations feel the winds and tides of change. With the search for the new Avatar only just beginning, the world seems poised on the brink of conflict. But without the Avatar, who will save the world? Hi, I'm Andrew. I play Marco, a firebender from the Fire Nation. Hi, I'm Archie. I play Aquila, a bloodbender from the Northern Water Tribe. G'day, I'm Brandon. I play Rung Bolo, an earthbender from the Earth Nation. Hi, my name's Bree and I play Sherva, a weapon specialist from the Fire Nation. Hi, I'm Dave and I play Al, an airbender from the Northern Air Temple. And I'm Owen, the dungeon master of this ragtag group of members of all four nations. What are we doing here? Hello. <laughs> Good question. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Lost Archives, everybody. It's wonderful to see all of your gorgeous faces once again. Welcome back to Avatar Legends. We are very excited to be jumping in. Bit of a cliffhanger we left off last session, and I will be jumping back in very soon. But before we do, just a couple of little announcements. Announcement number one. Thank you so much, everybody who came and joined me for the in-person D&D session, the live D&D session at the Collector's Market in Brisbane. So much fun. It was an absolute ball. Um, I've never really done cosplay before, so it was kind of fun to get into it. I, I think it now has awoken something within me, which is probably not great for my bank account, but hey, it was lots of fun and I enjoyed it immensely. Um, yeah, absolutely fantastic. A uh, very surreal experience um, getting like audience feedback when I make jokes just not used to that as a concept hearing people laughing and having to like pause and be like oh, i hope that was funny in this one where i exist in a vacuum of silence of uh well i hope that was funny <laughs> and i find out we don't find you funny no no not we after 56 episodes any of jokes. No. people find owen funny well I, they might have been laughing at me not with me that's an important yeah distinction okay, okay i make. believe that yeah, um, but it was it was a laugh's a laugh a laugh's a laugh and i'll take it um it was a load of fun and thank you so much everybody who came along um the people who came and asked to take photos with me i'm sorry i was really awkward i've just never had someone ask to take a photo with me before so apologies for that too because only like, three people come like can we get a photo and i was just like um, um yeah really really <laughs> awkward i don't know what happened to me <laughs> So thank you to those people. Sorry, I'm so weird. Um, <laughs> just apologies. I don't know what to say. Archie's got his hand up. That's a concern. Hey, Dad. Um, oh, I was just wondering. Stop the calling people, it <laughs> Why is the this people, still happening? The people who asked for photos, are they from, from here? Or did you just, were they just like random? So here's the crazy thing. Me? I didn't ask and I was so nervous when they asked. I genuinely don't remember what words they said. It sounded like from that point onwards. So I oh, yeah. I actually don't know. If you were from the Lost Art Cups, please comment and let me know so I can thank you properly for coming up. Because I just, I think I mumbled something like, which genuinely you could have interpreted as anything. I promise I wasn't having a stroke oh my though. God. That's pretty They're close. Like, oh, do, you, do you stream or do anything? I can see you somewhere. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, look, thank you. Uh, it was really lovely that you came out. So the reason you wear face paint is because it would have just fucking melted off you. It's, well, look, there's a funny story about that too. So the the reason I wasn't wearing paint for the costume because I bought paint and I thought I'd bought body paint, but what I bought was medium body paint. <laughs> Which is not to be applied to the skin. <laughs> so I oh. found this out as I was getting changed. And I was like, oh getting ready to put the paint oh on my for my God. tiefling skin colour. And Alice, my partner, was like, hang on a minute. This is medium body paint. I don't think this is for your skin. And I was like, yeah, yeah, it's body paint. She's like, no, no, it's medium body paint. It's got lead in it. Oh, Good mate. I'm a, I am a Warhammer. You can paint me. <laughs> yeah, I just, I, I realise these last two stories don't paint a great picture of me as an individual. <laughs> but Neither like, does that paint. <laughs> always get full body. Yeah, that was my mistake. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh yeah. So um, right, look, I just I was excited. I may have like been clicking like order on Amazon without really paying attention, and I googled body paint, and it came up as a result. I just didn't look any further than that. Normally, like, I'm much more discerning. Right <laughs> what was that? You're like, that's the right color. I'll take that. It wasn't yeah, though. I couldn't find the color I wanted, you. so I got metallic gold because I was like, oh, I'll do like tattoos because I'm a divine soul sorcerer. <laughs> so it wasn't even going to paint my whole body. I was just going to do like tattoos with it. The bit that we tested it on my um on my inner arm. I don't know if you can see this, but it's still there. It can't, I can't get it off. <laughs> it's like I think it's permanently a part of me now. Um, this, oh, mate. this guy does conferences for a living where he tells people about really important medical it's stuff. It's actually, it's so much worse. hang on to his every word and yeah. can't fucking buy body paint. It's so much worse than the conferences. <laughs> I literally spent like four hours in theatre today training a surgeon how to use one of the most complex pieces of tech I've ever seen. Genuinely, I don't know if I told him the right thing. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows at this point? Uh, and yet knows? you can't figure out how to buy body paint. <laughs> can you just tell me what surgery that is so I don't no. ever get it? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think I can. <laughs> is, is it just like I'm... dead space where it's got the big needle going? Yeah, into that's right. Like that? I, I was telling them to buy like the the uh, the two gauge needle, which is like a meter long, <laughs> as wide as a forearm. So hopefully that's okay. Oh, yeah, so um, uh, thank you everybody who came, in, uh, came along to the live D&D session. I really appreciate it. It was loads of fun. Um, you will be seeing us doing more of those in the future. Um, I was uh, I was there as a, as a player for Hermes D&D service, which is a, a paid DMing service here in Brizzy. Um, we will also be doing some Lost Archives live sessions in the future. So stay tuned. I will have updates on those as we go. Um, there's loads of cool conventions that happen every year. So many of them have D&D sessions and Avatar Legends. Well, actually, none of them have Avatar Legends sessions, which is what I was going to say. They all have like RPG sessions there as performances. I think it's a huge opportunity. Avatar Legends is amazing. Everyone fucking loves Avatar The Last Airbender. It's so like, good. Yeah, so I'll have some... Players? Simple-minded, like it's so much easier. Like, you know, it's simple you, brains. Are you, <laughs> <hang> <laughs> <on>. Sorry, <laughs> I, I do need to address this. Are you saying that people who enjoy Avatar Legends have simple brains? Oh, no, the, no, simple... The people that, no, the people like us who are oh, like, yeah, players. Like, <laughs> people people play play it. It. It's watch so it. easy. Like, I don't <laughs> even think. Big it's dice so number good. too hard. You don't have to think about spell slots yeah. and like, yeah. Yeah. dice I just do I roll with? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't even get don't... dice as a DM. There's, there's, there's not like experience. millions of different races and classes and sub races and everything that you well, okay, have, like okay. all this really niche knowledge of. There's there's four nations. That's it. And and an incredibly detailed world lore and backstory that everyone seems to yeah. know in like minute detail. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, you, you watch the series, you inherently know everything you need to know to play Avatar Legends. And if you, do, Whereas, if you don't watch the series, like some people, yeah. others will know for you. Like, D&D, mm -hmm. there's, like, I, I've never, I've played D&D &D a lot. Like, I have played as a DM, as characters, like players, so much, like, on several different groups of people and everything like that. And playing Baldur's Gate. I'm like, oh my God, there's so much that I never knew. <laughs> there's so many like different there places are some and classes things that are a little bit different that I with never Baldur's Gate too, though, to be fair. Like you can learn cantrips. Yeah. You can't do that in D&D. Yeah, edition. but even, even things like, I feel like I've never really experienced the racism of Baldur's Gate um, no. in real world games. Like no. I play a drow in my single player character game yeah, and it is be... so funny. Ooh. Everyone just hates you the second they see you. It's great. That would be a very different experience. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. I'm, I'm a drow rogue and I'm just going around like messing people up and pickpocketing them. Always. Yeah. I, that's actually such a good point because in the homebrew world we run for our D&D games, Dark Elves aren't this unseen force that only emerge from the Underdark to commit vile acts of evil. We kind of had the drow people split during this, like, uh, disastrous calamity beforehand. And so drow are kind of common. Like, people, like most people would have seen a drow before and know, know drow. So it's not like they're this unknown force. Whereas in um, Faerun, they are this unknown force that no one knows about. Yep. Oh my god. Um, the other <laughs> announcement I have to make tonight, Dave uh, may or may not be joining us. Um, I'm going to read exactly what he sent to us for uh, tonight because it's pretty funny. Um, 
Dave's exact words were, I'm sorry guys, I'm still getting my ass kicked at work. I honestly thought I could make it and maybe be a little bit late. And then the final message was, discovered another shit show as I was just about to leave, and then tears. And he's just sent us a picture of himself in his office, actually That's crying. Really sad. <laughs> oh, mate. So, um, yeah. Thing that he's hacking up now, so he probably won't make it. That's okay. I will play Arl for tonight. That's it. Easily, easily done. I'll, uh, I'll play as Arl. The other fun announcement I have to make, there's only one more to make before we jump into our session. Um, not next Tuesday, but the Tuesday after is October the 31st, which is Halloween. We're already doing a special Halloween one-shot on the Monday night for Curse of Strahd. So I offered the players and some people who were uh, joining us early on the stream whether or not we should do like a, um, like the Bloodbender episode style, like a Haunted story style episode of Avatar Legends. Overwhelming yes was the answer. So I will get to work writing that while I'm away on holiday over the weekend and I will have that ready to go as a special one shot. It will be a non-canon one shot. So for the Tuesday night, the 31st, there will not be any prior knowledge required. It's going to be a uh, completely uh, separate one shot. I'm going to have it be the characters as they are now, but sort of off on their own adventure. I think I'll probably set it as if the campaign has... Uh, Maybe, maybe like halfway through, maybe when you were near the Water Tribe. I want to kind of do something with the Water Tribe as the as the ghost here. So maybe back when you first met up with um, with uh, Akila. Yeah, exactly. You can have so. character deaths in this and it doesn't even matter. Like, you can just oh, yeah. oh, no. You want. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. no. Oh, <laughs> no. Hadn't considered that. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll have something fun with it. So I'll, uh, I'll get some more details out on the Discord and on Twitter as we get closer to that. Alrighty, that's all the fun announcements I had to share. I don't think there was anything else. Bree's got her hand up. I would just like to point out that um, in two days' time is our one-year anniversary of starting Avatar Legends campaign. Holy shit, is it really? It is. I just went and double-checked. I know I was like saying, oh, we've been doing this for two years. Because it feels like it's been two years, but I just went and checked. <laughs> Episode zero <Thanks. laughs> went live on October 19. Oh, hang on. It has been two years. October 19, 2021. Yeah. I was going to say, it has to have been two years. years in two days. Because we started when the Kickstarter <clears throat> essentially had just begun and we were given access to the Quick Start Guide. I think the Kickstarter had been up for, I don't think even a week when we, like, when I first started to get it together and then organized the group and then we ran our first session, our session zero. So that would make sense for the timeline. Session zero went up two years ago in two days. So that's nuts, man. And now he's going to kill us all with dragons. Yep. Uh, now, that's uh, another thing. All well. I'm not sure when we went live, but that's like a 30 minute time between we all gathered and when we actually started. Yeah. Yeah. That's about right. That's, that's about right, right? Yeah. yeah. That's what the preamp. That's the stuff we cut out. That's that's why you come join us on the streams here. You get all. You, you get know, the thirty minutes. The Everyone's here for the first thirty speed. minutes, and after that, you can leave. I'm in live uh, for twenty. <laughs> it's definitely no. You need to stay for the whole thing. The YouTube algorithm punishes you if you leave the thirty minutes. It determines yeah. that as a percentage of the video watched is like, nah, this video is shit, and disappears. I mean, I guess you have to stay now. So we're gonna it's... put up subway surfers when we actually yeah, yeah, watch sub... on YouTube. <laughs> Where Dave's Hold camera the is, just put subway surfers. <laughs> Wait, we're playing subway surfers? <laughs> what is it? What? Um, Owen looks confused. What is subway I mean... surfers? Is this? Am <laughs> okay, I revealing sorry. something it's here like, about like, myself? It's Temple Run for the new young kids. Oh no! No, I was out, the, out at the same time as Temple Run. No, <laughs> I don't uh, think so. No, Temple Run was earlier. Subway surfers is like um, I'm getting shit from the chat now. Hey, come on! This thing <laughs> come about on. how if you if you have subway surfers, which is this game, if you have that up on the screen on like a TikTok, yeah. people will watch that while they're listening to whatever else is going on in the TikTok, so it holds their attention better. And so it's usually I, like a Reddit post being read out. Yeah, so it'll but be I like could, an "Am I the asshole?" thread. But being I could do that more read. efficiently with nipples. Sorry, what? Where? <laughs> people... Wait, wait, I'm in. No, What's happening? Hear me out. Oh, I'm, I'm Hear me out. No one's sure. clicking off a page that's showing nipples. Okay, show, show nipples. Not mine. Mine are uh... awful. <laughs> 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 I have to, I'd have to part the, I have to part the forest of hair that's obscuring them from view. A group of British explorers went there and they've been lost for six months. 
intrigued because, like, he just they went to find God. Dr. Livingston, I presume. <laughs> I got tangled in a rather dense patch. Um. <laughs> I'd like to point out that Hermes D&D has just joined the chat to listen to you saying that. <laughs> Stand by. <laughs> I regret nothing. <laughs> um, no, it's like it's because um, people have really short attention spans due to like the way that TikTok is created and like everyone's basically got ADHD these days. So to hold your attention for longer than 20 seconds. You have to be watching someone play subway surfers. And so, or but, there's like but, sensory videos where people are like cutting up soap at the bottom oh, half of the screen, and then there's like something going on, on the top of the screen. I look, I hear all of that, but I do want to counter with: wouldn't nipples be more effective? No, yes. because that's that's a static thing. Like, let's test it. I, I say bouncing, the, bouncing. The ADHD, ones. my brain has all the rot. <laughs> I just listen to things on two times speed, sometimes three times speed. If really, I love like, that slow. you can just hold just, the side of the screen and it makes it go two times speed. So we're gonna speed, play so other play, guys. Faster. I hate to be this person. <laughs> okay, let's try a recap. <laughs> Um, look, who knows how much of this will make it into the recording episode. Probably I'll edit out all of that. Sorry, bit. bro. You, you can hate me. Put Subway Surfers in front of it. be fun. <laughs> Subway Surfers. Okay. <clears throat> Let me do our recap and we'll jump into the session. Our story has been following Sherva and Marco of the Fire Nation, Rung of the Earth Kingdom, Akila of the Water Tribe, and Arl of the Air Nomads. With the recent death of Avatar Roku following the eruption of his volcanic island home, omens of war and conflict seem numerous. The team are currently on the trail of four elemental spirits in an attempt to calm their rage and undo the damage done by a careless wish made of the whale spirit of the Sea Wong Desert. With three spirits now appeased, the Katsuni spirit of water, the Sky Bison spirit of air, and the Badger spirit of earth, that really only leaves the dragon spirit of fire remaining, which has now forced our team to travel west into the heart of the Fire Nation. Making a stopover at the volcanic island Roku had once made his home, the team learned that the Sun Warriors, ancient firebenders, may know more about the Spirit of Fire. Located far to the northwest of the Fire Nation, the journey through this area has revealed a concerning amount of industry focused on the production of weapons of war. After stopping off in Fire Fountain City, the team split up briefly to restock and gather rumours before making their way across the ocean once again. While Sherva and Rung caught up with a merchant and helped her unload her ship in exchange for a map of the Fire Nation, Marco went searching the town, stumbling across a soothsayer. After doing a card reading, which warned Marco of incoming danger, no shit, uh, he caught up with Akila, Arl, and the rest of the gang and led them back to the shop across the way, which seemed to be adorned with a number of symbols, some of which were familiar to the group. After learning that the uh, current proprietor of the store was actually the child of the true soothsayer, and this child really had no interest uh, or ability in uh, any of the psychic arts, the team left a little bit disappointed, not really learning too much about the symbols, other than the grandmother had once seen the ancient petrified bark slate that the team had last seen in the possession of General Zhao. With the team now set on their course, we spent most of the second half of the last session traveling far north across the ocean, past the burning rock into the heart of the Sun Warrior Kingdom. After taking a brief stop off to rest Mango, their sky bison, the group took to the sky at night, hoping that they would be able to spot lights to help them locate the uh, Sun Warrior civilization. And they did spot signs of fire. Gouts of flame rising from mountaintops in this particularly rocky terrain. Accompanied by deep roars rumbling across the landscape. And it was at that moment the team realised that they had entered the territory of dragons. And we left off last session as an enormous red dragon curled around the top of a mountain, a small cave underneath where it had clearly been resting during the day, opens its maw wide. A glow, soft orange and yellow builds inside. And then there's a sudden <laughs> And you watch as an enormous pillar of flame rises high, just missing Mango. And that is where we left off last session. We jump straight back in as Arl dashes forwards, grabbing onto the reins and pulling Mango up and off towards the right, trying to avoid this fire. Mango letting out a terrified bellow of fear as you see the dragon head lower. 
eyes darting towards the movement as it locks onto your position. What would you guys like to do? Cry. Cry. Okay, perfect. <laughs> yep. Scream. Brilliant. And chat. Do we, and let uh, it do we have the bongo? Does bongo do anything for this one here? <laughs> Let's run in the sky. It's not a bongo, it's a singing bowl. <laughs> Basically a bongo. <laughs> How much of our sessions do you pay attention to, Brandon? <laughs> Although to be fair, to be fair, it does make sense that Rung, the earthbender, would remember it as a bongo. <laughs> because to be perfectly honest, I don't think he was paying attention during that entire session. Yeah. Oh, what's this you got here? Oh, some sort of a uh, singing bowl. Well, bowl and bongo start with the same two letters, so personally I'm a you fan of You turn over the bowl and you hit it. And it's got a bongo. Basically. <laughs> Um, I love I, that these look a little bit crankier, um, and they're how also not forget, spirits. How so. did we forget about the dragons? Yeah, dragons. Yes. I don't know, you guys live here. <laughs> this is yeah, place. this it's, is our bad. <laughs> it's at this point that uh, both, oh. um, yeah, <laughs> both Marco <laughs> and Sherva, you remember vividly that there are not many dragons around on the mainland of the Fire Nation. In the last few years, uh, I'd say probably the last 15 years or so, Fire Lord Sozin has created a new sport, the sport of hunting a dragon. A firebender who can defeat a dragon earns the title of dragon himself and is considered uh, the ultimate in firebending power, a, a champion, a prodigy. And as a result not many dragons are left on the mainland. So a number of these hopeful warriors have had to sail to the north, right where you guys are now. And it's at this moment that you remember over the last five, six, seven years, reports have been coming in of dragons acting far more aggressively, protecting their territories, warding off any intruders, where before they were much more tolerant of humans. Since so humans have started, them. yeah. Since humans have started hunting and attacking them, it's, it's like a cause and effect. I think it's almost like a cause and effect situation. Yeah, like <laughs> like actions have consequences. Unrelated. Completely unrelated. Uh, uh, so I'm gonna Shiva and uh, Marco. I'm guessing they're wearing their red, you know, Fire Nation garb. Yep. I oh yeah. It. Yeah. Good. <laughs> good. 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 Although, in saying yeah. that, Marco's is a lot less Fire Nation looking. Now. Uh, is... I hang on, hang on. He did specifically it's... request that is crimson and maroons yeah. on his jacket. Um, yeah, but it's not like <laughs> it's not the a traditional fire. fire he doesn't have like the two meter shoulder pads. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he so he's those. smaller. They can't see him. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, do right do we <laughs> do we see other people hunting the dragons or just the dragons? Um. The uh, what I'm gonna do? What I'm gonna do for this? Do you want me to Yes, stop calling me dad. <laughs> yes, please. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I've tried ignoring it. I've tried correcting the behaviour. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Um, which only is makes me more like your actual fucking parent. <laughs> that see, description. You smile yeah, you, when he says it. That's the positive reinforcement. Yeah, you haven't gone to get milk, so you're not like my real dad. Chat has some great news. Oh my god, read it out loud. Go on. Um. I need to tell you guys, I've actually had a Game Pass ad play before turning on Twitch. Um, that's Dave who's posted that. Dave, somehow, even when he's not here, manages to shill Games Pass. We're not sponsored by Games Pass. I wish we were. Clearly Dave, Dave is. Dave, you're the best. <laughs> Chef's kiss. Um, what I'm going to do is well, at this point... to you. You've already got it. Sorry. At this point, what I'm going to do is throw us into a pseudo-initiative. We're not going to be running it as a combat encounter per se. All of the combat moves are open to you as they normally are um, at any point. But what I'm going to do is we're going to throw us into a pseudo initiative where each of you will have essentially one action. And that's going to be defined rather loosely because obviously the way Avatar Legends works is there's not this kind of idea of actions and reactions and bonus actions, things like that. So it's going to be a bit uh, more we're rough. We're turning on turn-based mode. We're turning on turn-based mode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Someone's hit H and we've just like <laughs> top down turn-based <laughs> mode for this bit. Um, so what I'm going to do, yeah, each of you will have a turn to do something and then there's going to be an environmental turn. Um, Archie, you wanted, Akila yes, thanks, wanted Wagon. to do, uh, have a bit of a look around. Could you please roll me, uh, assess the situation, please? While Akila is doing that. Was there anything else the rest of you wanted to do? Arl is going to be focusing on piloting Mango. His entire Hello, turn man. is going to be keeping Mango on the, uh, on a, essentially like a zigzagging pattern. Uh, Andrew. 
No? Yes. Sorry, my, Maybe. my computer's just having a heart attack. What? Second. He's deleted one his second. camera again. Um, again? 11, Akila. So your first question... One sec. That's okay. Your first question, Akila, was okay. uh, are there any people about or is it just the dragons? As yes. you peer over the edge of the saddle, um, looking past Mango's fur, you, I mean, at this point, all of you are clinging on as Arl pulls the uh, the reins over towards the side rapidly, causing Mango to bank and turn putting all of you sort of uh, essentially on like a bit of a, almost like a 45 degree angle as Mango swiftly tries to outrun and avoid the gout of flame from the dragon's mouth. As you peer over the edge of the saddle, Akila, and look down into the darkness, you can't see any lights below you or in the immediate vicinity. What you can see far in the distance, uh, it's hard to judge distances at night when there is no real light. I mean, at the moment, you've really only got the light of the the uh, waxing moon to help guide you, but you can see gouts of flame rising from nearby mountaintops. It seems like this is something the dragons do in the evenings. Maybe it's a territorial display, maybe it's a, a display of some other sort, but like as you watch, you see another six or seven pillars of fire rise up from the tops of the mountains, illuminating the night sky briefly. What's the census? It's a, it's a census. <laughs> the beacons of Gondor! Um, so you still have one more question, Akila, if you would like to ask it with an absolute success. Uh, please come back to me, Dad. Give me a second. Um, Dad, I, I figured out what I want oh, to do. Fuck. Why is this, why is this spreading? Uh, yes, Andrew. Um, I'm just going to prepare myself um, to try, I, because it's a dragon, probably not likely, but try to like redirect as much fire as possible. Okay, absolutely. So you're going to sort of move to the back of the saddle and essentially kind of defensively, almost... Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that I know how you're kind of deflecting it, are you trying to kind of redirect the fire away from you to split it, or are you trying to interrupt it with flames of your own? Um... I'm just trying to think what would be most likely to be effective. I can lightning bend. I'd try to do... Redirect it. Try to use what I learned from lightning manipulation on that on fire okay fantastic um i also i also see that you have advantage andrew yes. for this um yes. gifted by dragon i i hadn't i hadn't missed it i promise um i just didn't want to uh to interrupt the uh the absolute gold that was uh, spilling out of uh, archie's mouth with his uh, turn um <laughs> he looks uncomfortable do i have um, the same turn what <laughs> I was uh, I was employing a, a subtle use of sarcasm. Um, yeah, hundred percent, Andrew. What I'll get you to do Make for what I'll get you to do uh, for Marco is could I please get you to roll? Um, I'm going to say with skills and training, uh, and you may add a plus two to this for the advantage that's been given if you want to. Otherwise, you can save it for later. It's up to you. Skills and training. Where's that one? We, we've played this game for a while. It's fine. It's in the main basic moves. Um, rely on your skills and training. Underneath, uh, push your luck and above trick. You've got to open up the website first. It's a good start to have your character sheet open. <laughs> Log into it. Yep. Always a good start. Except guys, guys, I think I'm having. I think I'm blind. Um, yeah, we know. You're so not wearing your Brandon. Oh, rely on. There it is. Okay. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Um, yeah, I'm gonna add a plus two. Sorry. Uh, no, that's okay. Used. In two days, we've been doing it. <laughs> Genuinely concerning. So eight, eight success. When you add a plus two, that becomes a full success. Marco, as you duck to the back of the saddle and begin focusing, I'd say with a 10, there's a moment where you're kind of almost channeling a style of water bending. You've seen both Akila and Oki at different points using water bending to help redirect and move the flow of water. And really fire kind of behaves a little bit like a liquid in those circumstances when it's fired forwards it spreads out as it moves the velocity is not too dissimilar and as you hold your hands ready as another gout of flame rises up behind you you move almost instinctually your hands coming forwards to reach out and then pull around and shape the fire around the outside of the um of the the bison around the outside of mango the sudden flash of light in Mango's peripheral vision does cause Mango to rear up a little bit, but with Arl's expert handling, Mango stays on track and begins diving down towards the ground. Um, 
Arl at that point turns back and goes, where do we go? Uh, do we go up? Do we go down? What do we do? Looking a bit concerned. On that note, Papa, I would like to ask my second question. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's better than daddy. <clears throat> What's my best way out in through? What's your best way out and through? Like out we can't go over through. it. We can't go like under what's, what's it. We've got to go way. through it. You're going to go through <laughs> both the large and small intestine of the dragon if you want to get out of here. Um, That's hot. So as you, as you have a quick look around Aquila, you can see at this point that the dragon has begun to flap its wings and has started to rise just above the peak of the mountain. It doesn't seem to be chasing after you at this point. And as okay. you look down towards the valley below, you can't see any... Uh, blasts of dragonfly, any pillars of flame. It does seem okay. like down would be the safer option at this so point. So we should go directly to the dragon. Uh, look, it's your choice. I, that's the information uh, you're, you're... I will tell Arl <laughs> uh, that we should go down. Okay. Arl immediately pulls on the reins and begins encouraging Mango to dive. Uh, while that is happening... We've still got two more people. I'd love to know what they're doing. Let's go to Rung. Really pretty simple. I'm going to aid my boy, um, Arl. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, I want to aid him and I want to sort of be his eyes and ears in this moment of pure concentration. It's like keeping an eye out for him. If there's any shit he has to try and dodge out of the way for, if he knows any flames or anything coming in. Like, I'm just going to use the aid to help me as much as I can. Because Dave is not here, rather than me rolling for him, I will get you to roll me assess a situation. Perfect. Uh, Wait, did that roll? Or would I have to try it again? No, try it again. Hey, there we go. It's a seven. Seven. That's a partial success. Success with consequences. Um... As you begin looking forwards and back, I mean, the main problem you encounter, Rung, is that it's nighttime. It is dark. And as you dive down, the moonlight no longer illuminates the area quite as well. The mountains cast shadows that stretch across the landscape. And this area is very mountainous. Um, it almost looks like the shockwaves of some long dead super volcano that has risen up and then dropped down, leaving behind this shattered landscape of very, very high mountain ranges almost sprawled across the landscape, running like ridges on the spines of a, of a large serpent. The darkness does inhibit your ability to help Al to the fullest, but you are able to point out very quickly a large bank of trees, a sudden uh, rocky outcropping, a small plateau, and dodge out of the way before Mango crashes into them at high speed. Sherva, what would you be doing? How close is the nearest dragon to us? As Arl begins to direct Mango to dive, we're talking about 80 meters maximum. How strong would you say I am? Uh, you're a highly trained warrior of the Fire Nation. <laughs> you are pretty strong. <laughs> like, stronger than the average person. Okay, so who typed whip range on eighty meters? Who did that? <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's good. not at all what I was even thinking. Um, okay. Good. When so, a dragon comes along, you must whip it. <laughs> Sorry. My thought is, and I'm not sure how well Don't. this would work. When the fire is burning strong, but you must whip it. I would like to hinder. Yes impede a nearby character inflicting an appropriate status yeah. i would like to hinder the dragon who is currently chasing us yeah by throwing like unfurling and throwing our eight person tent over its face so that it cannot see or f continue to follow us yeah and i would like to do that to inflict the status probably impaired would make the most yeah, sense definitely uh, i don't think trapped is good enough i think it would be impaired yeah i'm gonna get you to roll with uh, i think that's probably gonna be a push your luck i think i think that might did you, just... did you want me to roll for the evade and observe like typical like nah, don't... Your oh. harmony or 
Yeah, go on. Let's, because let's do that. Because Hinder yeah. is in that. Um, I am happy for you to push your luck instead if you'd like that, because it's not. We're not really doing like this. It's not like a proper encounter as it is with the normal yeah, okay. rules. So I'm happy if you'd actually roll with push your luck if you like, which is a passion. Passion. I like roll. that better because I have a plus two to that. I thought so. you. Yeah, I was. I was I surprised you were really arguing hope. with me. I was like, you haven't checked your character sheet, have you? Well, no. I. I just wanted to. I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't taking advantage of you. I was expecting um, pocket sand, so this is way better. Pocket sand. Okay. Jeez. <laughs> I got a 13. 13. Um, I'm That's gonna good. say that you do this before I'll actually direct Mango to dive. Okay. So all of this kind of happens simultaneously. As that second- Thank you, father. Don't react. As this second, uh, second <laughs> blast of fire <laughs> shoots, as this second blast of fire consumes Mango, the last feeling <laughs> all of you experience is pure agony. And you smell your own flesh and hair burning. In your nostrils. We're just really sad we didn't get to know our dad better. The feeling yeah. of <laughs> um, the feeling no. of disappointment. Like like we just feel like we've been disappointed in someone. God, what is this mood bad. you're in tonight? Just disappointed. Does Dave keep you under control? I find that hard to believe somehow. <laughs> but he's the balance. That's why he's here. Is he though? Yeah. <laughs> or does he just gaslight you into behaving? Um, as you <laughs> sorry, Dave. Uh, not Dave, that's all. Not Dave, that's all. Um as you as <laughs> God damn it. As this blast of fire shoots off just to the left of Mango, Sherva, you think quickly, reaching down and unclipping one of the tents from the saddlebags, you essentially just throw it. And as you do, a knife on your belt, phoom, slicing the cords, the belts that hold the tent shut. As the tent flies out from the back of the saddle, the wind catches it and unfurls it. As the dragon turns towards this sudden new shape, growing in size apparently right in front of it, the moonlight casting the shadow across it, the wind changes just ever so slightly. Thanks, and the all. dragon can't get out of the way. As the tent wraps around its head and upper body, you hear this almost panicked, strangled cry. And as you watch this little blast of orange light from behind the, the fabric, and then the sound of fabric tearing. And it's at that point that Arl pulls down on the reins and you watch, I should actually say pulls down, as Arl relaxes the reins, leaves a lot of slack, and Mango dives. As you drop down the side of the mountain, moving very, very quickly, you hear the sound of another roar above you, this blast of light illuminating the night sky. But still, no sound of flapping wings, no rush of wind, and the roar fades away into the distance as you begin essentially dropping down into the forests below. That was really well done. I'm actually yeah. going to take you out of the uh, the standard initiative because like a sudden dark shape emerging flying towards the dragon like a like a winged figure would take its attention very much so and as you drop down below its line of sight and disappear into the shadows of the mountains that's that's it it's not going to follow you down where it can't see you Yo, my ego is like up here now <laughs> yeah, yeah we won right three. we really Big like we're three. all just like we were like all terrified and now we're all just like hell yeah <laughs> that's that was really really nicely handled quick thinking i where are we gonna yeah. sleep tonight Nicely. Did we win? <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, while while you guys were talking and going through your turns, I was I was thinking about doing this, and I, in my head I was like, "Do we really need a tent? We can probably just sleep under the stars." <laughs> yeah, yeah, people okay. are gonna be mad no. at me if I just no throw the tent and alive, away. Tent and dead. There's a difference. Yeah, yeah, I was really worried it was gonna roll really low, and we would just be without a tent and still being running away. <laughs> Look, no matter no matter what happens, you can't use the tent. If you're dead, you can't use it. If you use the yeah. tent as a distraction, yeah. you can't use it. So at the end of the day, the tent was gone. <laughs> there was nothing yeah. that was gonna. No, there was no saving the tent. Um, no, very very nice. This means done. we will be sleeping a little bit rougher. Souls right. guys. I'm kind of worried you're going to kill the dragon, but then you'll get a cool name of dragon. Yeah, so I think we found a new way to hunt dragons. Are you, are you ready for something that's incredibly fucked? You can only earn the title of dragon if you are a firebender. Oh. Yeah, because you're beating them with their own element. Yeah. Patriarchy. What if, what if the fire equivalent <laughs> of that would be? I guess it'd be the Emberarchy. <laughs> Emberarchy. <laughs> nice. As... The sudden immediate threat is no longer there. 
Arl slows down Mango's descent to a much safer, more controlled descent, no longer just dropping like a stone. Arl pulls back on the reins a little bit, slowing Mango down. With Rung looking out, keeping an eye out for any danger, you're able to navigate down into the forest below this kind of valley area. Um, Around you are three very, very tall, high mountains, the tallest of which being the one that you just dropped down the side of, uh, that the dragon lives at the top of. At the very bottom of this little valley, you catch a glint of moonlight reflected in a large lake in the very center of this, uh, almost like a little nestled valley. And as Al slows down Mango right, right down, and then lands on the almost like a little grassy plateau near the edge of this lake, for the moment, you seem to be out of immediate danger. As Mango lands and Arl drops the reins, he just sort of turns around slowly, wide-eyed, and goes, Um, that would have been good to know about. Yeah, uh, hmm. We've been spending too much time in other nations, kind of forgot. Uh, they're still a thing. <laughs> Are they normally that aggressive? The, the stories I'd heard of dragons describe them as being indifferent. I people. mean, if you had people constantly trying to kill you, wouldn't you be a little bit more on edge? Why are people constantly trying to kill dragons? Uh, it's this oh, really yeah. cute, fun game we play. Um, it's called Who Whack a Can... Dragon. <laughs> the, the, the <laughs> it's like Whack-A-Mole, but with a dragon. <laughs> the prize um, is a cool title. Mm. I mean, we've had a lot of people try and kill us, and we've been a bit on edge, so, you know. Can, yeah, you can, you can, can understand buy. how they're feeling. Um... Mm. No, so it's this it's this really cute game that uh, Fire Nation's currently playing where if you kill a dragon, you get the name dragon, and it's like this like exclusive title thing because there's only so many dragons in the world and it's really hard to kill one, so like it's really important. How did or Roku let this happen? I'm oh, pretty looks... sure it happened after he died. No, no. Nah, he, nah, it started oh, no. He started Roku, That was the thing while he was doing Roku it. Roku yeah. tried to yeah. stop it, but didn't. He wasn't very successful. He mostly was like, he, he, stop it, guys. Stop. Yeah, he was and very... that was his contribution. Roku too. was more concerned about his own dragon than the rest of them. He, probably. <laughs> he just didn't want anyone to kill his pet. It's the only I reason think, he cared. No, I think, I, yeah, I, look, I, I, think, I think Roku did try to stop it, but at this point, Sozin had already kind of revealed himself as. Not a particularly cool, chill dude, and uh, he didn't Kyoshi it. He, he didn't, uh, yeah. Roku, <laughs> Roku didn't Kyoshi it. <laughs> he very much was like, oh, Is okay, it you said no. dragons. Or if you kill a person with a title dragon, you get the title. No, it's only actual dragons. If you kill a person with a title dragon, it's not passed on. Is my understanding. I believe from yeah, the people law, are too easy to kill. Yeah, I no, believe from the law, as a firebender, you have to be the one to kill the dragon to They're earn a title dragon. Want mythical, mm. and uh, which is why when you hear about Uncle Iro. His title being the Dragon of the West makes it a little bit extra sad that, uh, yeah, Iroh was one of the... I think he actually... He thought he'd killed the last dragon, uh, I believe, is the the story. He believed that he was uh, the person who killed the last dragon. Super sad. I mean, think about it. People are so much easier to kill. You can kill them in their sleep. Dragon's a little bit harder. That's... It sounds like personal experience. Um, let's carry well, on. I mean, I'd like, think about all the ways that Just you can so kill specific. a person, right? <laughs> is this, is this, this is really be or or like, they don't even need to be sleeping, let's be honest. Yeah, like, there's so many other, like, times you can get them. Yeah, you can poison their food. <laughs> Dead. They don't, poison they they food. Them when they're on the toilet. You, can, you can poison a person and then feed that person to the dragon. So you killed a person. Would that work? And dragon. Two birds, one I feel like I feel like the amount of poison that you would need to kill a dragon would be so much more than the Just amount you would need to someone who's lactose person. intolerant cheese and they'll be on the toilet, they're defenseless. <laughs> yeah, you can lattice to that person or the talk. That's me. Though. That's me. See, I'm also lactose intolerant, and I take great offense to this. The idea that I would ever be in a vulnerable state where someone could just kill me. I've got a question. Does yeah. this count as a derail? Oh, no, yeah. Because we're talking about dragons and how to kill dragons, and how it wouldn't be the same as killing someone with the name. Of dragon, like how to kill your dragon. dragon is a very different DreamWorks film. <laughs> <laughs> the kidneys are the most delicious <laughs> part. Hiccup actually, died, Hiccup actually died in the start of that film, so it's all just about revenge. Yeah, he's um, actually in a coma. The entire thing is very sad. 
Yeah. Okay, I think the Pixar comment made a derail. Oh, though. it does not. I'll if no. I derailed, I derailed there. Like that's. I'll. I'm happy. I'm happy to let it slide, but the Pixar does not. Um, I'll. I'll <laughs> nods along, sort of going like, "That's really messed up that people would kill these majestic creatures." Although to be fair, if it was in self-defense, I kind of get it. That was terrifying. That. They never used to be like that, though. I wouldn't call it self-defense. Like, they're literally being hunted for fun. I don't think. Yeah. yeah. Recognition. So, I'm thinking we don't go flying at night. Mm. Probably not. Well, the, the difference is if we go during the daytime, they can also just see us. So... Do you know it's much like about dragons? dragons? Are, they... Are they nocturnal? All right, here we go. I Perfect. So. I, both of you, Fire Nation, Fire Nation oh, people, God. I will get you we to... Should know. I will get you to roll me. I'm going to say that for Sherva, it's a push your luck. For Marco, I'd say this probably falls under... What would this fall under? I would say this falls under skills and training because you have, you've officially been educated as an ambassador of the Fire Nation. This makes sense. You it's should know this. It's, 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 it's not a skill I'm good at. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Seven. Uh, alrighty. Seven and eight. So both with consequences. Yeah, as both of you reflect, you... Yeah, you vaguely remember something about dragons being a lot less active during the middle of the day. They almost, in a way, kind of act a little bit like sharks in our world. Their main hunting times are dawn and dusk. And as you reflect back on what you've just seen, you've heard of this event known as the Dragon's Fire. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, where uh, where dragons send up pillars of fire. They're all sometimes known as the, the dragon beacons, where in the evenings and as, and as the sun has set and, and the night is dark, dragons will sometimes send up these pillars of fire for two reasons. One, to warn off other dragons. This is my territory. Don't come near. And also to potentially attract a mate. The males are the ones who do this. Like, look, how, look how much fire I can produce. I am strong, healthy, and will pass on very good fire-making genetics. So Shoot up it's... a little flame. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like. Ah, ah. So there's there's kind of a dual dual thing happening here. It's both a mating display and a territorial display. Like fuck off, this is my my space. Um, it is not a good idea to head into a dragon's territory while they are actively announcing it uh, <laughs> with fire. Not a good call. Um, to be but, fair, they actively announced it once we were already in yeah, the Yeah, we were like, like in, like, and then we, they we announced it, it. It's the, like a whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, but they have a time <laughs> that we don't understand. They're on dragon time. So that was good, man. And it's almost like I specifically asked, oh, so you're only hanging around for like, what, five or ten minutes and then going into the into the air again? Right? And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not hanging around long. I was like, you don't want to wait around for an okay. hour or two? And you went, no, no, no. We're going right now. And I was like, okay, great. No, <laughs> we, we went out in like the, the night we had a pl- and it was exactly. dark. We yeah. stuck that yeah, plan. Yeah. We executed that plan. Yeah, yeah. for the sun it's, un- it's never seen before. <laughs> <laughs> so how are yeah. we supposed to know that's when they're mating? Like display is going to be happening. Because you can see fire at night way better. It's the logical. No, um, <laughs> as you, <laughs> that was the logical reason for why we went up. They're too busy sunbathing. I know. Day. It's my favorite part. Um, as uh, yeah, Chevron and Marco. You're pretty confident if you were to wait until just after dawn, essentially wait until the sun's a little bit higher in the sky, have a bit of a sleep in, you're probably going to be safer. Um, but if you were to get up like as the sun rises, probably not a good idea. Yeah, fair. I think we get up as the sun rises so that we know if we're going to get attacked. We can. I feel like it would have been a really good thing if we had like a tent to shield us from the sun so we could sleep. Or in a like, bit. no, I feel like a mango is the biggest problem here. I'll make us a little. Mango. Because I'll make us a little what happens I'll when a hungry... mango is kind of prey? What happens when a hungry dragon <laughs> sees a, giant sees, a buffalo. sees like a, a youngish uh, flying bison? Like, what happens then? I, I wonder. Good question: Do yeah, dragons I mean... hunt sky bison? I would imagine. I like so. Do we have a Do we have a donkey? Do you have a donkey? Yeah, I've never seen like a donkey. donkey on no. Mango. Uh, Do you reckon there's any donkeys nearby? Well, no. There'd be Once, like hey, hey, with the with the major dragon over there. Sorry, like a oak donkey. It, there'd be like a, a, a I half guess it'd be ogre, like a half donkey. Why? Why? Where are you getting ogre from? He, he's he's trying to get to Shrek, Shrek. donkey, donkey, dragon. Yeah, but I'm babies, preventing him. Mating display. I'm preventing yeah. him very like successfully here. 
So I wouldn't call it successful. Now, you asked a dumb question, you got a dumb answer. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you play with dumb people, you got dumb questions. Hang on. So Ma Mango at this point, you're your juvenile it, sky bison. Your your juvenile sky bison mango at this point is cowering under the trees, uh, looking up with fear, large brown eyes, staring up at the sky. Um a little bit out of breath, having just flown across probably the largest expanse of ocean you've done in a single fly. Um, just oh, 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 trying to catch catch her breath again as Arl heads over to check on Mango and gives her a bit of a pat down and, and sort of attempts to, attempts to try and calm her down and get her feeling a bit more uh, a bit more calm. Um, the tree line above where Mango is hiding below it's pretty thick. The canopy itself is is quite lush from above. He probably would be pretty protected here. And Rung did make a good suggestion. Like, he could earthbend. Yeah. I was, I was still going to, like, even in front of the thing of the trees, just stone A frames or, like, just two big slabs is, so they come up. So it's like a little yeah, fucking hole sort of deal. So mm -hmm. I just go in there. So even if for some reason they see us through the trees, we're covered by some stone against fire here. It's my only goal. Brilliant. Uh, can, could I get you can two? Can we do three yeah. so that we've got one behind us as well? Oh, yeah, no, we'll cover the back. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, otherwise it's just. <laughs> well, that, that's what you were like. That's like what I was imagining. You were like, like an A frame, frame so two pieces. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, can we get some protection from behind? <laughs> but no, what about the wind? We need like a breeze. I'm sure there will be gaps in the stone. <laughs> Want to make a window? Do your schools and training allow you for that? Yeah, you uh, can, yeah, probably. Well, let's see. Uh, could you please roll me? Could you please? What'd you get? Ten. Best heart success. you've seen. Did it uh, make a three-story house? A killer. A killer. You rolled. You rolled with creativity. What were you rolling for? Because that is not uh, a good roll. Trick. I was rolling to see if I could find a donkey. Oh, okay. That's a two. So, <laughs> no. In fact, as you yeah, think about said, it, as you think about it for a moment, you're like, what donkey. even is a donkey? Uh, run ten. <laughs> absolute success. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> despite There's having dragon donkeys in this world yeah, no. yeah there's just... only uh, donkey badges or dadges 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 dad dad you could do it with a donkey <laughs> badger too that would have yeah oh that's what you said donkey badger yeah that's what he said yeah, donkey yeah. badger <laughs> donkey mode a big bad donkey mode um as you right as you i mean despite having just fled for your life from a creature that probably be one of the scariest creatures you've ever seen this long serpent like body massive wide mouth framed with scales forming almost like a frill that leads back deer horns rising from the top of the head able to breathe fire and that's i mean really the existential threat to the coal industry is probably the thing that's forefront in your mind right like this thing can produce flame on its own it's pretty terrifying to think about um but you do manage to overcome your fear of this uh, of this horrifying creature. And as you slam your feet down into the ground, you pull up three pillars of stone, triangular pillars of stone, to form a, uh, a rough uh, teepee. As you then walk inside and then punch the walls, you punch out windows, essentially, causing the, uh, the sections of stone to <laughs> fall into the lake. I couldn't have made them, like, warning windows or anything so we could, like, close them. Oh, you could make this stone. <laughs> Hinges on stone. I haven't cracked that pie yet. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I know what I'm doing now in my downtime tonight. I'm going to see if I can make a hinge <laughs> of stone. I'm going to make a pivoting piece of stone. It was going to be like there, hinged. like a little tube, and see if I can like just like earth bend, like flick out. I reckon, the I reckon you could make it. I reckon it's definitely possible, yeah. but it'll take a lot of time. Yeah, it's not like a not for an cool instant house sort of thing. <laughs> no, no, it's uh, I have to make each piece by piece. It's one of those things that would be better to metal bend. Mm. Can still do it with stone. You could still do it with stone. Um, brilliant. As you head inside and take a moment to unpack your uh, your saddlebags, unpack your bedrolls. I mean, the loss of the tent, while a little bit sad, is tempered with the knowledge that that really probably saved your lives, that sudden deployment of the tent in uh, offensive uh, offensive mode. And as you roll out your bedrolls, have a very meager 
meal of I'd say probably dried fruits, uh, bread, cheeses, things like that. Probably I I, I mean look, hey, you tell me toast? if you want to light a campfire, you let me know. They wouldn't want toast. No, no. thank you. I don't Anyone think that's want... a great idea. Anyone want salt? Oh, we could do a hungy. Oh, we could do oh. like a Oh my god. Hungy has no fire. We could have a good barbecue. <laughs> I mean, it does, but like... it's not Yeah, they can't see that. <laughs> It's still night time, isn't it? It is still night time, yeah. Cause... Okay, let's put it this way, though. If we light a fire, they just think we're a very young dragon. Mm -hmm. no. oh, and and come that and we're check. on their territory. Can on we their not? territory, <laughs> and they'll just... come and murder us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, all, all they'll see is our little, like, little cave with smoke coming out of it and an orange glow. <laughs> So my question you is, are you, are you lighting any fires? <laughs> no. Uh, no. No, thank you. God, no. <laughs> Good. <laughs> the evening is cold, and you have to bury yourselves into the um, into the furs, blankets, and bedrolls that you brought with you from the Water Tribe to stay warm. The night passes. In the morning, you are awoken by the sound of birdsong around the outside of your little uh, stone teepee. Not long after the birds start, everything goes quiet. And you hear the same roar from before, rising from the mountaintops. Those wow. of you brave enough to peek outside the makeshift windows or out the front, you can see the dragons repeating the same display they put on last night, this time with the dawn, as the sun is just beginning to rise far in the east. These pillars of flame rising up from the tops, lighting up the sky. A few hours later, as you rest, recover, maybe take a bit of a dip in the in the lake, refill your supplies, have a bit of a, a bit of a chill morning. The bird song returns in full force. And Marco and Sherva, you're pretty sure you're inside a safer window to venture back out again. Cool. We're good. Let's go. It's like what, 8, 9 a.m.? Yeah, it's probably like 9, 10. Good morning. 9, 10, exactly. Sleep yeah. in. <laughs> I like dragons. 9, 9 to 10, 10. a.m. 9 to 10? 9 to 10. So it's 9, 51. That yeah. took you so long to figure out. <laughs> I'm really <tired. laughs> I watched the smoke come out of your ears where you're like, it's uh... There's a little dragon in his ears. There's I can hear the sound of his CPU the... overheating, the liquid cooling no longer sufficient to maintain <laughs> his brain function. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Sorry, Archie. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I laugh, it's not me right now. <laughs> oh my god. What would you guys like to do? Uh, head off. Um... Alright, head off, Azeroth. See you later, Hyrule. <laughs> I, this is a, this is, can I just say, I know the reference you're making. It is <laughs> oh, a, yes, good. It's an esoteric, <laughs> vague reference that you've gone for there. I'll be That's, off, Azeroth. See you later, Hyrule. Hyrule. I'll be gone. <laughs> <laughs> That's, um, oh, who is it? It's the, it's uh, the oh. Skyrim animated song about, um, I try to remember the, it's not, not Total Biscuit. Yes. Who is it? It was... Oh, was that Old Tabuscus? Yeah, it might no. Have, no. Was it? No, it nah. was um, ASDF movie guy, I think, Tom Scar. Oh, wait, no. No, it's different. It's the dude who made... Oh, can't remember it. He makes Dr. B's. Harry Partridge. Harry Partridge. In your oh, Harry Partridge. Happy to give that Harry Partridge a free shout out. <laughs> absolutely, mm -hmm. Brandon. Yeah, Dean. Hundred percent. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I'll take that. It's great because someone actually voted on Brandon derailing. <laughs> hey! Congratulations, just person. Who just I actually want to know who. What, what are the votes like this time? Because I, <laughs> no, I haven't checked. There was in a while. two votes: one for Brandon, one for outside source. Uh, mm, barbecue. I was really worried it was going to be outside source because Lucy, uh, my library is is very much like letting me know that she's keen for dinner <laughs> like she's made a few grumbles next to me she's come up and like licked my chair she's like wandered down the hallway done a little bark she's like very like she's trying to keep herself contained very and the cat walking across my face and yeah anything <laughs> <laughs> oh my god um congratulations donut for winning nice i got you donut
this is our thing here. We just got like this betting scheme on. We're like, you know, it's like... <laughs> wait, <laughs> betting's rigged. Um, as you, as uh, so, yes. what's going to be our best way of finding people who don't generally want to be found? You found? Find an extrovert. That. Extroverts find them. Or pretend <laughs> extrovert. We're like, so we are we? Sorry, are we on the main island? now because there was like several smaller islands as you check your map it, it's hard to know exactly because you're flying over the ocean for so long but at this stage judging from the trajectory that you took and then and knowing that you passed over the boiling rock this massive caldera just out in the middle of the ocean slowly converting seawater into steam you think you've probably landed on one of the southern islands of this archipelago up towards the northwest um this doesn't seem to be the big main island. There's three main islands that kind of stretch across the Sun Warrior Kingdom, two or three medium islands, and then a number of tiny isles that make up this archipelago. You're on the southernmost of the medium isles. Okay. By I your best, should, best estimate. I think we should head up to the Keep main going. islands, but flying low as much as we can. I thought altitude was good for stealth, not flying low. I mean, it wasn't so much the, like, the problem was right. I'm As worried about, like, a back. bunch of them seeing this really tasty bison. Flying high Sky above. Yeah. The barbecue range. Because I'm like, if, mm -hmm. if we're, like, down lower, we can kind of see them and avoid a little bit easier rather than being up high where, like, four or five of them can kind of look up and see us. Yeah. We don't know where they are or how many Do we have there camouflage? Are. We do. No. Do we what? Does Mango have camouflage? Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a skin that we can unlock. So I reckon Al can just like make a cloud around her and we just like fly inside the cloud. Well, here's one of the crazy things about Sky Bison is they actually do have a type of counter shading in their natural coloration, like the white fur on top and the slight gray underneath actually does help them blend in when being viewed from below. It's what a lot of fish like use. Like how fish. Exactly. It's what a lot of fish use to help disguise I know, themselves. I know that. You I know, know a that. thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I'm so proud. Yeah, Mango does have a form of camouflage kind of. Stealth. Yeah, form of stealth. Um, Yes, 100%. Uh, as, as you suggest that to Arl, he nods and goes, yeah, I should be able to cloud bend a, a little bit of a bit of cloud and mist around Mango. Maybe should we have it above us and then we can then see below and that way we're not trying to look through cloud. I could try and like, keep it above us, but I, I can't I can't fly Mango at the same time as I do that. Akila, would you be able to? <laughs> My time to shine, baby. I heard your knuckle Yeah, that, that was so very clearly. loud. <laughs> Did I'm you old. enjoy it or is it not I so much as I felt so good. <laughs> so good. <laughs> I'm having to resist cracking my neck again. Um, as yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to. Do I it. freaked them out before we started, which we were about to start. I was like, <laughs> both sides of my neck. Sorry. Um, perfect. As you climb back on Mango, Rung, do you leave your little hut set up or do you destroy it in the morning? Probably, well, uh, no, it's tracking us, right? Leave like it that. there. Leave I'll it. leave it there. This is good. This I mean, is the who's wildlife tracking now. us? Just the Ember Island players. Yeah, just the tracking. Ember Island this players. That one. They're little, stupid enough to come here. That's their own problem. Little bivouac set up for anyone who needs it. Any animals. Boom. This is campsite now. Yeah, it's not, it totally doesn't have our scent on it mm. and like or anything. Oh, Perfect. the scent will be there to put the rocks on the ground anyway. So yeah. I love the idea of you guys coming back in a few days and finding like a uh, a turtle bear uh, <laughs> hiding in there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> an old an old hermit. He's like, get off my land! <laughs> I've lived here for, you. <laughs> I've <lived here laughs> for seventeen you? years. Um, <laughs> as as you climb back on Mango, Akila taking the reins and yip yipping to uh, take off to the skies. Yip yip. I'll yip, yip. closes his eyes once again and focuses. Yep, yep pulling around and calling upon his uh, special bending technique to create clouds around you, um, calling upon his spirit bending. As he produces this cloud bank above you, the storm clouds, whereas before you've seen him gather these much darker storm clouds, this time he seems to be trying to keep them much more translucent rather than summoning these big angry clouds. It's more just trying to keep a bit of a misty covering above you. As the cloud bank settles into place, probably about a meter or so 
above you if you were to stand up on the back of the bison. As you peer up through the underside, it's very hard to see much detail above. And you're pretty confident that anything looking down from above would just see a, a thin wisp of cloud just drifting across the uh, the sky. Alrighty. As you begin to head back uh, on your northwestern pathway once again. Thank you, Andrew, for the, <laughs> the, the toy <laughs> placement holder for that uh, journey. Um, as you begin to make your way across the island and towards the, the three main islands, it only takes about an hour or so before you start to spy signs of what was once inhabited land. Passing over the thin strip of ocean that separates this smaller island from the three larger uh, sections of the archipelago, you see a crumbling tower standing on the edge of a sheer cliff face, probably what was once a lighthouse or something similar, but long abandoned. The design reminiscent of Fire Nation architecture, but with a much more angular feel to it, where the Fire Nation tends to rely on these curved pagoda-like structures. This seems far more, um, I'd say far more like basic shapes, much more trapezoids, uh, cubes, and um, a, lot, a lot less curves, much more angular architecture. Very reminiscent of Aztec or Mayan architecture in our world. It's very obtuse. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. As you fly what over. Cute observation. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're you guys angling. that just right? I know you're angling for a joke time. here, but uh, we, can, we can let these go. Um, I get the point. Um, um, uh, as... so did they get the Parallelogram. Oh, anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, making Owen very trapezoid. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well done. Um, as you as you continue flying over the uh, the main island, the first of the main islands that make up this archipelago, you don't have to search hard for signs of this lost That's civilization. Adam. There's buildings overgrown and covered by the jungle everywhere. In fact, within the first 10, 15 minutes of flying over this larger island, you see what was once a, a small outpost, a small village. Houses completely choked and overgrown with vines. No sign of any people. As um, I'll, I'd say probably once you leave the valley, I'll stops the cloud bending and takes back over flying mango again. As... Al uh, flies Mango down to take a bit of a closer look and you have a peer over the edge of the, the saddle. It's almost like the people got up and left, just left one day. No sign that they were ever there. As you peer through, you can see jars standing by a well, choked with weeds, overgrown with vines as nature has reclaimed this land. You can see over towards the far left a field of corn that has become completely out of control, no longer cared for. The corn has grown wild, spilling out over the edges of the plots and starting to consume the inner section of the village itself. That's amazing. For the corn? Thanks, Ray. Thanks. <laughs> that's, that's all I needed. <laughs> what? The, disappoint, the disappointed laugh. What? I don't That's understand. <laughs> Brandon, your camera's gone again, by yeah, the way. Why we're derailed? Um, another way I'm... of corn is may. Is another way of saying corn is maize. M A I Z. -E. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he could... said it. That's amazing. Oh, I get it now. Fuck, I'm slow. That was. I should have got that straight away. I was. Just What's wrong with you? <laughs> it's clearly enough. It's an off day for me. I've used up all my brain cells during the day. Clearly, <laughs> I've only got a certain number per day. Um, Six. Six. Wait, you get six? I, I do a lot with them. I make them work hard, <laughs> clearly. Um, Not hard enough. Not hard enough. Oh, man. As you... Yeah, as, yeah, as you... really like dad brain. Brandon? Hello, Brandon. Brandon, yeah, Brandon knows his camera's out. Yeah. Does he know? Yeah. He has to. I was going to say that I was really... It's an hour and a half in, of that course. That no one brought up when his webcam died. Yeah. 
I waved. Just, everyone just, everyone was just quiet, and I was like, I, wave, oh, I waved goodbye. We're really mature. We're not even bringing it up anymore. Should I? He's not responding. Should I hang up on him? <laughs> we didn't yeah, bring it up like in most sessions leading up to, it, and it's only been like recently we started bringing yeah, it up. It's only been a recent thing that it's gone. Ah, we're, we're just trying to shame him into buying a like battery pack. Sure that battery pack plug can be plugged in. It in. Whatever, we'll give him a chance. Battery. He'll figure it out. Um. Yeah, I mean, anyway, the, the, and then Rung died. Rung, he just watches Rung keels over, blood pooling from inside his uh, his left uh, conjunctiva, uh, the the inside of his left eye. He's got kidney stones. <laughs> <laughs> they do normally present with a blood forming in the eye. That's true. Um, as uh, he took uh, his headphones out. Oh, he can't hear us. Um, Look at him waving his hair around. It's like a gun, yeah. Fantastic. You are worth it, Brandon. I just want you to know that. A gun, gun. I'm sorry. <laughs> My camera went and fight them like, okay, really get some water. And then <laughs> I had to check because I was out there. This is this is commitment to quality and professional streaming. Um the <laughs> village was yeah, very recently abandoned. Um as you look over, there's no sign of anyone having been here for a while. The Oh, uh, we've lost them. You've you've lost the trail. We've lost Uncle. the lost city. Oh well. We tried. As you continue guys, your way, I'm sorry, Marco. Go on, Marco. What have you got? As you continue your way inland, on left, that's what he's got. The villages become more and more. Uh, they become larger and larger, and more and more frequently, you find yourselves passing over them from above. And as you pass over a large ridge, a mountain range separating what looks like a smaller valley behind you. Below you, you see this enormous city covered in greenery and half in ruin, stretched out before you. It's easily as large as the Fire Nation capital, this enormous stone city. The walls of the outer section have been completely destroyed. Trees have grown through and crumbled the stonework, but much of the inner city looks fairly intact, just overgrown with vines and, and plants. Far in the distance, Almost in the very centre of the city itself is an enormous palace-like structure. Rising from the centre of this village, high into the air, this almost like a step temple rising up. And the plants haven't yet had a chance to overgrow it. Even from this distance, your eyes can make out the symbology, the um, statues standing on the roof and up the walls. Dragons. What would you guys like to do? I think go we should head, head top. Yeah, go have a look at the, the, the massive temple ziggurat. <laughs> yeah, ziggurat is a good word to describe it. It's a, a massive a triangular temple that's been separated with these large steps rising high above. And yeah, at the very, very top, this enormous... Um, almost like a, a large open pagoda at the very, very top of the temple. Stone landing dragons. Pad. What was that, sorry? It's a landing pad. Bingo. Two, yeah, could be. Could be used as a landing pad. There's no throne. There's no, like, giant seat that I can go sit on. No no giant seat that you can go sit on. <laughs> on the outside, you maybe. sit on it? Maybe closer. As uh, you know, yes, let me sit, sit in my on. throne while I witness the destruction of the world that I caused. Basically, yeah, that, that's all I want. <laughs> As my life falls apart, I'll just sit in this throne. Mm, cool way to do it, though. Like, it is a cool way out. to do it. I'm, I'm going to go out more when I'm going to go out. As you begin making your way, flying over the city, um, yeah, I, I mean, I'll focusing on, on um, keeping Mango steady. As you get closer and closer to the temple, you can see that it does seem to be out of the entire city, probably the, probably in the best condition. The temple has barely been overgrown at all. The lower sections haven't been claimed by the vines, but all of the upper sections untouched. And at each step of the temple, you can see entrances large enough for many, many people to walk shoulder to shoulder, tall enough for people at least like nine meters tall. These massive like entrances dragons. leading into this enormous structure inside. Like dragons could enter it? Like... Yeah, I mean, as you think about that, Arco, it's pretty tall. Probably a the, dragon could. Que question. Ooh. Hello. The buildings are, are there any larger buildings around that would be like 
make it seem as if the ziggurat's being like protected, like it's just people actually keeping the vegetation from growing up it, as opposed to just it's just the ziggurat keep like it's how it's built. Definitely going to get an assessor situation on that. Bad that's boy. fine. Yeah, that that makes sense. Did you see like hatchet marks? <laughs> yeah, yeah, hatchet. Rats. Well, it's more. Uh, <laughs> where was assessor situation? There it is. <clears throat> oh, oh, yeah. I'm blind. Well, <laughs> five. <laughs> Marco, as you as you look over, I mean, the city's clearly deserted. You can't see anyone. It's the the, the streets are choked with vines, with trees. Nah, no one to be living here. I mean, you've heard the stories. The Sun Warrior civilization has fallen. None, none are left. Um, there's a number of... I mean, you've, you've heard the stories of a, a lost tribe of Sun Warriors still alive today, hidden far to the northwest. But, I mean, yeah, it's kind of a hearsay situation. The, the Fire Nation propaganda that you would have been exposed to says that, like, the splinter group who, who left the Sun Warriors and then became the Fire Nation it is today, they were the stronger... They were the rightful inheritors of the the flame. Sun warriors yeah. were a yeah, they're they're a leftover, yeah. they're a relic of a past long since forgotten. Um there is no there is no cut grass that you can detect. <laughs> Essentially. <laughs> Shit. As Al does a quick circuit around the outside of the ziggurat looking down and then looks back towards you guys. Should I try and land on top? Like, what do you think? Top seems good. Yeah. May as well. Why not? Get a good view of everything here. Bird's eye view, one could say. Then we can work our way down instead of working our way up. That's really yeah. good. It it looks like structurally sound enough, right? We'll like find it. out. That's why we're landing on it. So if it doesn't, we can just take off again. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. I feel like we should keep an eye out for traps and stuff. Do you want to jump off first to test? How about you, dead boy? Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> maybe maybe I'll shoot you there, dead boy. Yeah, I'll should jump off first. Why? I think. Worst case, is it because he's got plot armor? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> As you, I mean, bring... Al could like just kind of touch, but not really touch. And then you could glide like... away if something yeah. happens as well. I'll as you as you bring Al down, essentially to try Mango. and uh, as as you bring Al down, as Al brings Mango down to land on the it's top. It's okay. It's okay. Al, we'll bring you down. <laughs> as Al brings <laughs> Mango down to land on the top of the ziggurat, you can see that this um, almost like I'd say almost like a shrine atop it is actually burning. There's a, a bowl in the very center, a light with flame just softly burning the smell of a fragrant oil um detectable even as you as you land and begin moving around but yeah in the very center protected by this dome on pillars that rises high above the ziggurat is a flame burning away and underneath the uh, the bowl you can see a number of symbols and sigils depicting all sorts of uh all sorts of strange um fresco designs on one, you can see a dragon breathing fire towards a firebender. But, I mean, at first it probably looks quite aggressive, but then you see the firebender holding the flame and pulling it down and placing it in the bowl. And then the flame burning bright, illuminating the city like a source of sun, a source of light in the darkness. This flame seems to be the bowl and the flame seems to be the flame depicted in the mural, but... It's much smaller, almost almost a candle flame compared to what it is carved into the stone around the bowl. And as you look inside the bowl, probably Marco is the best person to judge this, you can see that there is a small, uh, almost like a small tube at the very, very bottom, which probably is used to help drain oil into this to keep the flame alight. But the oil's almost gone. Yeah. And dragon breath, I think, is what this is telling us right now. Yeah, give me a second. If only we didn't use all that oil to burn down that village. <sighs> Damn. <laughs> if only we knew. I'll if having knew. a bit of a peek over the edge looks down and goes, "There's a there's a, a mural down there, on the walls of the of the ziggurat. There's like a large should painting or something." Should I wish for oil? 
I don't. Yeah, let's, let's go have a look. No. I don't think you should ever we wish should again. Go. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> jump, There's jump, no point there. jump back on Mango. I'll fly us down. I, I don't think there's any entrances up here to this temple. And as you oh. look around, the top of this this top floor just seems to be for this flame. In fact, as you look around, you can't see any doorways, any hatches, any ladders leading into the temple. This just seems to be almost like a the top of a lighthouse is the best way to kind of describe it. This bowl of flame. Hmm. As, um, let's see if we can he, find some oil. Yep, Ron, what were you going to say? Oh, I'm keen to check out this um, mural. painting fresco thing, mural, Yeah, that I was talking about. Fresco. As I'll, <laughs> as I'll jumps back onto Mango's back and, and, and flies you down to the very, I'd say probably the second level of the ziggurat, Sure enough, there's an enormous mural carved into the stone. The stone itself, for the most of it, is this sort of dark slate grey, but the mural has been carved through to reveal this beautiful white, almost like marble-like stone. On it, you see two dragons, hands clasped together, bodies rearing back serpent-like curled over each other as the heads rear back and breathe fire into the very centre. The flames flicker almost lifelike and surround a figure a humanoid figure standing in the center of these flames arms outstretched head thrown back as if being consumed by the fire he said marco on fire wait is this what the painting says statue right it's a a mural a relief on a wall (laughs) okay sorry i zoned out for a second i thought it was a real dragons not real dragons they're setting me on fire. Yeah. Does anyone who be the best person to roll this? I think probably. I'd say probably Rung. Could you assess the situation for me? And actually, I will get uh, Sherva too as well. Rung and Sherva both roll. It's not real marble. Stone. I'm. <laughs> can't think of any. It's actually saying. granite. Granite. <laughs> Ten. Stone. Ten Sherva. It's Steps. strange. The figure in the center. Fox looks like they're being consumed by flame but there's no damage to their clothes to their skin in fact the flames almost seem to be surrounding them rung as you look closer the stone didn't always used to be exposed you can actually see signs of where this mural was probably once covered in a layer of paint flecks of colorful paints reds greens oranges yellows still exist on the flames, almost as if they were once semi-rainbow coloured. The dragons themselves were once probably a red or a blue, as you look closely. That's all you can make out. You guys ever noticed, like, I know red dragons a thing, I've just seen one recently, but have you guys ever seen blue dragons? Is that a thing? I mean, spirits are blue. Shev, you've seen, I mean, you've, you've heard you know tales of dragons coming in a number of different colours. Red and blue are pretty common, but I mean, you can have green, you can have orange, you can have... They're like a, there's like a shiny version of a dragon. <laughs> it's a lot rarer. Yeah, save your master ball <laughs> for that. Um, yeah, you've, you've you, I mean, you've heard dragons come in a number of different colours. The most common are red and blue. Oh, okay, so blue is common. Heard. <laughs> Blue's, blue's slightly less common than red. I'd say in terms of yeah. commonality, it's red, then blue then oranges you can get some brass red's metallic faster. colors red's faster <laughs> purple okay. stealthy ice. okay um, but like why why would they put the two most common dragons on a mural it's kind of boring why not make them a different color red like and blue? any dragon can burn a man it's, alive because is that what it's doing it's showing like what it burning someone or something it's not burning yeah. so much any as like in- Sorry, I, yeah. I, was, I was distracted for a second. Um, is it the fire that's also the colors? The fire was rainbow. Fire mm. was rainbow? It's chromatic. Chromatic like, dragons. Someone put magnesium so in it. how many different, from different elements. metals did they need to... <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> a lot. Magnesium is white. Uh, copper. I don't, yeah. I don't actually remember Copper's, anything. Yep. Yeah. Who are we um, is there anything else around here that we notice? It's just this big mural here and this big sort of Stairs hallway outside. up on Stairs. either side leading to the second level of the ziggurat. The entrance 
If I know anything, oh, let's go up the stairs. stairs. One stairs. Rolling up the stairs. Is there anything else about the mural that sticks out? Like, is is it literally just two dragons and a man in the middle, or is there any kind of like, um, like architecture around them to show like where this is taking place or anything? Else. Maybe maybe once the mural had another layer beneath it, but that layer has actually crumbled and fallen in the staircase that was once there, the stone stairs, collapsed and breaking that mural off and shattering it. You have no idea what that mural might have depicted or showed. This one now seems to only exist in isolation. Okay. Brilliant. Onward, ho. Uh, onwards and upwards. Excuse me. What'd you, you call me? just call these people hoes. <laughs> Oh my god. You can call me a hoe, it's fine. Everyone, quickly, on Twitter, <laughs> cancel does, pretty pixel. Santa cancel. does it constantly. <laughs> As you make your way up the stairs and begin climbing up, you can see that the ziggurat rises high above you. Climbing up the stairs, Arl has to leave Mango behind for this little bit and having to choose between checking out the ziggurat and leaving Mango completely by herself or coming with you guys, Arl elects to stick with Mango and keep an eye on her. As the oh, four of you, choice. as the four of you begin making your way higher, you find yourself standing before a large open archway. The room beyond, half hidden in shadow, but above the doorway, a pillar rises with a bright red gemstone, a large ruby embedded into the stone. Hey, Rung, what do you make of this? You know, like the ruby embedded in the stone? Is it a real ruby? Is it really? How high is it? Yeah, can I? Oh, like 12 meters up from where you guys are? Okay. I was... Would I... Could I, with a torch, like, sort of, like, get some stone and, like, make myself a little, little pathway up somehow? Like if there's like bricks or something in the wall, could like like to like knock a few out a little bit so you get you a little. Could, you could earthbend handholds and footholds. Yeah, of course you could. Yeah, I'll do that. Just go my way up the wall. Get up there to get a good look at this ruby up there. I'd like to see if it's like a what sort of ruby. Is this Does it look like there's any like paintings around of some of that or? It's been it? carefully carved into almost a perfect sphere. It's set into this large circular disc. Around it rise almost what look like horns, three sets of horns on either side um, carved uh, into the stone, and then above it a central, almost pagoda-like shape uh, into the stonework. This was probably once covered in gold leaf, but that has since faded and left behind only the, the lightest flakes. The ruby is beautiful. It's been locked in place and set this large red gem um, set in place uh, and as you climb up to this top bit and look down there's a matching ruby on a similar pillar right down in the centre of the courtyard another hundred metres away from you at the base of the ziggurat and the angle uh, seems to line up with this one here Bill I'm looking look, as I, said, I don't think we should take these out feel like these gems are connected and I sort of like gesture over the other one all the way over there like they all seem kind of lined up don't think I should take this out as much as it's tempting <laughs> <laughs> I'll start sort of climbing down there's nothing else around it's no like painting or anything like that's just no, gold leaf four just four the, so like they just can, the faded gold leaf can we confirm that they're rubies yeah, Rung, as you as you peer closely at them, they appear to be rubies. I mean, judging by the red coloration of the gem, the way they've been um, carefully shaped and carved, yeah, probably rubies. You wouldn't you wouldn't facet a red stone if like this and put it up in your building if it wasn't a ruby, I'd imagine. Yeah, I mean, the other option is like... could be a very red sunstone. <laughs> Sunstone's normally much lighter, but you have seen dark orange sunstones and. Um, uh, sunstones that sort of move into the red coloration. The thing is that sunstones are normally quite opaque. They kind of have a bit of a, um, a frosting to them, whereas this is clearly designed to capture yeah. light as it shines through. How well faceted and polished. 
yeah. Beautiful. Can't be fun. If so. I was to strike a ruby with fire. Yes. What would okay, happen? Okay, that's the answer then. No, no, what would happen? The answer. Fire no, 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 we're would... about to find out. Okay. We're about to find out because yeah. you said yes. And I'm like, As Rung that's... begins climbing down, Marco just unleashes a little ball of fire at the, at the ruby. The fire um, dissipates against the ruby and the stonework, leaving behind a very light staining of soot on both. Cool. And a flash of light on the other what? side. I think shot. if you if you if you um, merge a ruby with your shield um, when you're work, walking through snowy areas, it keeps you warm. That is true. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um. So this room that we're in is there? You're any... still outside, but as you look in, oh. as you look in, Sherva. Great question. Yep. Two semicircular dioceses stone statues of dragons arranged around them each in almost like these patterns of movement and at the very far end of the room a large doorway sealed I got hung up on the wrong thing like always I feel like the rubies are still somewhat important yeah but probably not the most important <laughs> like now. the most important <laughs> men we can oh, wait. Take them Hang on. I leave. tell. I tell a brief. I tell a brief and important lie that I will need to retcon. There's Sorry. A door between us. Inside, there are not statues of dragons. There are statues of sun warriors, each of which seem to be in various poses. As you step into the room, the first two have arms raised up. Two of them, one on either side of the entryway. On the left hand side, they seem to, on the left and right of these two figures, they seem to drop down to this much lower pose and it continues around these figures performing almost what looks like a bending technique until they meet again at the far end of this circle. Arms outstretched, fists together, meeting in the middle. On the floor, on the floor in front of you, you see a large, what almost looks like a lotus pattern. But rather than the uh, flower petals curved and smooth, the petals almost look like tongues of flame rising oh, out okay. in so orange and reds. But it does look very like, flower-like. Not like the petal, the thing that we got, the, sh- the show tricky. No, not like the uh, pie show tile. Yeah. yeah Marco and Sherry, I'm going to say, like, don't know why you guys changed your theme with the Fire Nation. This stuff's way cooler. <laughs> <laughs> they were weak. They died out. Do it. They knew how to do it. If I was Damn. to... Because we had any say in what happened. Yeah, because we... I, I'm just letting you know that. the like, son of a diplomat. You've got to go back and bring this all back here. Right um, now, cigarettes. If I was to copy those motions... Yeah. They would do nothing. Would it, no, no, no. Would it, rem- would it resemble any technique that I've someone's tried to teach me or that I've seen? If Can I, I get do, you like, to... the motions. Can I get you to roll me with push your luck? Meanwhile, is there anything on the walls? Any what, sorry? Anything on the walls? Uh, the walls themselves appear to be uh, pretty bare. No real details that give a, a huge amount of information. Um, the room probably was once adorned with beautiful paintings, but they faded. Turned on into the dust. Like, in the like inside yeah. of the, like, this front- is a rat. Like on the inside of that room, if we look up behind us, yeah. to like above the door, oh, is there's a hole the, in the roof. Does the ruby that, come through? Yeah, or? there's a hole in the roof that leads to the. Uh, you could look up to the sky and you can see the the pillar with the ruby shining there. It's it's a it's a thing. It's like Marco is- uh, six. That is a miss. As you look over these techniques, none of these seem familiar to you at all. This is fire bending, unlike any you've seen. The figures, I should say, the the statues. Be a useless firebender. <laughs> the figures are dressed in very Aztec Mayan clothes. <laughs> these like loose fitting, um, almost like I guess like a, a, a skirt, um, like a tunic skirt around the the waist. Kilt. Um, yeah, not too dissimilar from a from a, a fabric kilt. Um, beautiful metal. Um, chains uh, arranged into this like um almost like a a, a pattern of um like a binding pattern around the chest that link up towards the back and then connect onto the uh onto the uh kilt 
guess is the best word for it. Again, these statues were probably once painted, but time has just eroded the paint away into nothing. Time is not an ally. What's inside the lotus? Nothing. Just the the lotus itself is the center of the statues that dance around in a circular dais around it. So it, there's not like any kind of like bowl shape or no. anything. No, nothing at all. At the far end of the room, you can see a, a doorway, but it looks like it is sealed shut. No signs of any markings on the outside, just the doorway itself. Hey, Rung, how thick do you reckon that door is, and can you earth bend it? I don't think it's thick for as it. it. I think he's got a thicker skull. You know, like, touch it, get a feel of it. He's my rock. Yeah. rock I'd, say, I'd say that's the skills and training. Let's do it. I don't think I'll be able to cheese this, but if there's a chance. Eight, am I looking great? Eight, you're looking You're mediocre. always looking great. <laughs> eight, eight, eight <laughs> success with consequences. Wrong. As you concentrate and look at the door, examining it, knocking at it to hear for weaknesses, maybe tasting the stone a little bit just to see if it's, uh, yeah, exactly, taste the mineral content. You know immediately that this is not just a thin stone door this is probably inches thick quite thick indeed as you wrap against it there's no reverberation on the other side probably this leads to a chamber beyond but it's pretty thick um it's thick as you as you check the stone it seems to be some very very dense stone material not one you've come across before probably this is like an excavated bedrock this is going to be very tough to bend. Uh, when you've come across um, deposits of, of bedrock, very thick, compacted stone in mines, it's always been easier to go around them. Most of the the benders in the in the mines, the coal mines where you grew up in Laiwowo, wouldn't touch this stuff. It's too much effort to bend. It's it's almost as hard to bend as it, I'd say. It's probably the hardest stone to bend because obviously I was yeah. about to say it's hard to bend as metal. Metal bending hasn't been invented yet. Um, yeah, it's the hardest sweet. stone, hardest stone to bend. Awesome. I say that to guys. I'm just sort of like touching it, wrapping on it, feeling it. Do you like? <laughs> it's there... just like full on against it. This stuff here, bedrock. Can't do There's it. There's no Possible. like rubies or anything next to the door or like around it or anything that would be sort of set up to be like a, a, a mechanism to open it? None that you can see. As you, as you peer around the door, it's almost flush with the wall itself. The only way you notice it is because of the archway that, that depicts it and, and uh, separates it from the wall itself. But this is clearly a very well-constructed device designed to not be easy to open from this side. When in doubt, firebend. Firebend what? What would, you, what would you like to do? I wanna, there's there's two things I want to try to do, but they're both very insane and not going to work. One, I'd like to get the rubies to light up and see what happens to that, but that's not going to happen. Two would be just to firebend the door, see if anything triggers that, because they are firebenders. Yep. You tell me what you'd like to do. I feel like the light thing is probably what we're supposed to be doing. I've played enough video games to know this. Yeah, yeah, it's not a vibe, but I'm like, I don't know, I don't have the, I don't have the final piece of the puzzle for that yet. I don't I'd know. Also, I, I, I'd also argue that clearly you guys need to rewatch uh, book three of Avatar: The Last yeah, Airbender. I haven't seen it in a long time. I need, I need to watch, watch Avatar. I need to watch Avatar. What oh, the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you know, in the two years, you could have watched it all by now. You, you know how you like. Barco's my name. I didn't know that was the guy from Legend of Korra. <laughs> <sighs> I saw a TikTok like halfway through like the, the couple sessions in and I'm like, oh my god. Did you pick the name? Yeah, I just random. He just went on to, I think it's, uh, what's it, the name generator.com. <laughs> no, 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 I just, I was like, what? I was like, I went, he wasn't I went a name fire, generator. but then I was like, okay, what does fire mean in different languages? And Marco was one of them. And I was like, cool. That, I like that. That's amazing. <laughs> <It's curious. laughs> 
<laughs> you do. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, you guys Dan. definitely do need to. Like, Andrew needs to watch season one, two, and three. Everyone else Look, needs I've, to. I've I've yeah. seen like the last like five episodes of Avatar like twelve times. Why only yeah, but, the last five? Like, the, the, you need the emotional the, payoff. <laughs> last chapter of the book just like it's all i need baby it's, it's, end. hey del toro quest that's where i was at okay no the old you version need the of the youtube the video on way to the peak also can i just say yeah, I the del toro quest it. rpg system holy shit that'd be good oh yeah please please i please i'll be down okay maybe we do that after we wrap up avatar maybe i'll run a powered by the apocalypse del toro quest series wait is this ending Never read those books. <laughs> well, as Andrew, as as Marco steps up and fire bends at the door, um, <laughs> you happens. hear the sound of mechanisms clicking in the distance, and then, with a sudden twang, a metal wire pulls out from the wall, spins across the room, and decapitates all of you. And that that is the end of the campaign. Thank oh, you so much. Except all. Except all. Except all. No, no, none of that happens. Um, Marco, as you as you lean back and then push forwards with this gout of fire the flames lick at the edges of the door burning off any remaining paint that might have once been there leaving behind a trail of soot and a, a bit of an ashen uh, coating on the outside of the stonework but nothing further happens as far as you can see that is until oh yeah no go go wrong i was gonna say like these rubies that we see around like is it just like wall Ruby stuck in there. It was like pillar, wall, pillar, Ruby, Ruby, and then oh, pillar, sorry. Oh, yeah. pillar, oh, pillar, Ruby, pillar, pillar Ruby. Yeah. So we need some way to like. Ruby. Is it like one of the center, and then there's another one close to the doorway, like where we were when we walked in? But that one that I looked at on the top was on the outside, and did it have like a back where? No. It was like, yeah, no it, back. We could, no? It, it, you could see the ruby from both sides. Exactly. Wrong. What if you just pull down the pillars? No, 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 bad thing to do. I'm all about chaos here, but I feel like that's gonna... Well, like, I love chaos, chaos as much as the next person, but no. What if we, like, go outside when we first seen that one, get, like, a torch or something like that? Can we just, like, or you light a fire in your hand? I can light a like, fire. Is that all we I need to do? Yeah. And, like, just, like, instead of throwing a thing at it, but have, like, a light source at it. Like and see if it just comes out from one light, side and yeah. refracts to the other side. It was lined up with the green one. Where was the first one we saw? Because it wasn't. Was it in the archway above? Uh, so it's they're both on pillars. One is right down in the very centre of the city, in a large open courtyard. The other one is on a smaller pillar just above the ziggurat, above this this floor of the ziggurat. But I think if we get someone, if Mark uh, Marco flies down, be right back, guys. Yeah. Flies file. Uh, should Try I that? Normal flames? I think you just need to have like a light, I think. Yeah, so okay. You light to refract it over here, I think. Cool. I'll, I'll see what I can do. Wait. It would be good if we had like a torch. Yeah, do you have a torch? Wait, I think I have a torch. Yeah, I think I've got a... I think I've got a torch. A 9 volt battery torch. Yeah. I got one of those ones that you can wind up so you never actually have to like change the batteries you just have to keep cranking it you just hear in the distance <laughs> oh my god <laughs> amazing so oh, yeah, what, would you guys, what would you guys like to do we uh, wouldn't know the dragon dance would be god you would have never heard of that before Bree. yeah okay Try it out. We can learn the the why, while he's flying I'm, down. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember where. Where is he moving? and Duco learn. You mean right um, here? Where we are? No, didn't they learn it from? Uh, maybe I'm mixing things up in my head. I feel while like Iroh knew it. While they're playing he with lights and stuff. Yeah. Can I just try and copy the, the um statues like the movements yeah 100 percent. as you like, play around with that yeah 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 it looks like looks like because the, the statues are in a group of two there's, there's two statues that move away from each other they start together in the same position they then move around the outside mir mirroring positions until they meet again at the center arms outstretched fists closed pointing towards one another um 
Yeah. I mean, as, as you as you follow around the outside, mimicking the movements of the statues, as you step in the first position, there's a click underneath your feet, and as you look down, a pressure pad, invisible to the uh, to the naked eye when it's flush with the the floor, drops down on your feet as you move into position, and then as you move to the next position, click, a second pressure pad depresses. Guys, it's the pacifier movie. Ah, oh, I've seen that. Yeah. Oh, if you said the pa- if you said Vin Diesel from the start, I would have got that. Huh. <laughs> or I don't know the episode where this is actually in Avatar: The Last Airbender. I haven't seen it. Oh, don't know it's Vin Diesel, but he's gonna deactivate like the secret spy lab. Yeah, he's gonna do like, all those. He's gonna do the fun dance. That's deeply song. depressing for me. Yeah, yeah that's that oh, that really Try so hard to recreate. <laughs> Really magical I've seen that movie more than I can from the show, yeah, such, and such people movie. people don't such recognize it when you describe movie. it exactly. And then the moment that a pressure pads out, they go, "Oh yeah, the pacifier." Fuck me! Why am I? Why am I bothering with this? What am I doing here? It's just this is just sad. This is really it making is, me like, question my life decision and the trajectory that moment, I'm on. Right? Oh, my face is red. That's great. Brino, Brino knows what we're talking about. Yeah. The pacifier movie or, no, or the Bri- actual thing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, I yep. <clears throat> no, I yep. Thanks for your uh, thanks for leaping to my defense, Bree. It's much appreciated. No, 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 no. I I was trying really hard to remember like that episode. So I like was a movie. Googled a picture <laughs> of the room and I was like, oh, it's that episode. So yeah, no, I know what you're talking about perfect so who's gonna do the fusion dance it's gonna be i'll do it it. as a as a entertainer as a firebender i'll do it i got some trevor get out get out the bongo (laughs) the good news is i am spared from much more of this as uh, my timer has just gone off um as the two of you begin to move into position there's suddenly a shadow cast across the statues. And as you turn round, you can see a figure silhouetted in the sunlight standing in the doorway. <laughs> it's not... Oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The figure has long hair pulled back into a ponytail. Not just the sides of their head are shaved, but most of the top as well. Dressed in... Almost like a... Yeah, almost like in a robe that's bound together with metal links of chains, golds and silvers. Feathers woven into their hair. And as they cock their head, the silhouette makes it hard to kind of distinguish with the light behind them, makes it very hard to distinguish whether this is a man or a woman. And the figure speaks. Who are you and what are you doing in the sunstone chamber? Dancing. I'm Brown. That's Marco. Sherva. Makila. Makila. That's it. You forgot my we name. We are looking for a spirit. Oh my god. Who are you? What are you doing? You know you can speak Northland wrong. I, like the abandoned temple place. I oh, know he yeah, talked like... all like mysterious. <laughs> I Your am, mysterious yeah. talk is just like very clipped. <laughs> yeah, you feel like, <laughs> like you come across stop offensive. after every word. <laughs> yeah. You come across offensive, like you're trying to speak to someone who doesn't speak like the language, but they do. They just think they don't. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. The figure sort of cocks their head, and as they pull their arm out from behind the uh, the doorway that you couldn't quite see where their arm was, you can see they're holding a spear. Whoop. As they hold the spear up in a, in a position not super threatening, but sort of letting you know they are armed. Two more figures emerge from the either side of the doorway, standing into position. Spears also held upright in the ready. As Marco goes into a bit more of a defensive position, the figures I... kind of chuckle to themselves. Yeah. Can I like start getting some <clears throat> some water prepared into like? Ice, nice. Like get those kidney stones ready. Yeah, you just. I want to like just prepare. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, the long sleeves of your coat. And I'll show I've got weapons too. 
Yeah, nice. The ice crystallizing and forming these two knives, seemingly from just out of nowhere. Like in like a like a cool superhero movie sort of pose. Show me what that looks yeah. like. I can't. I've bad legs. <laughs> <laughs> um, what have you posted in the chat, Archie? What is this? Oh, it's the pacifier. No. Dead. <laughs> I'm deleting that. Um, as you, as all of you, as all of you watch. The figures kind of chuckle a bit seeing you take defensive positions. And then as they notice the ice knives and then take another look at the clothing that you're wearing. You are not all of the Fire Nation. Good observation. And you're, not, eyes work. and you're not here for the Sunstone. The what? The what? There's a moment of confusion. You all look so convincing, I love it. There's a moment of confusion as the figures look to one another. Well, on, is that the is that it? Is that, oh, that's what's behind this door? There? Is it that one up there? Do you mean the ruby? You watch as they turn towards each other and begin conversing uh, almost too quietly for you to make out much, but they do seem a little bit confused as it's, if they weren't expecting this conversation to go on. It's rude to like turn your back on people. Shut up. You, Love of God. who have trespassed into our holy sanctum, to the sunstone chamber, you speak to us of rudeness. Typical Fire Nation. I apologize for his actions. Hey, I'm just, nice. just learning a new dance. I also apologize for his actions. <laughs> Come. We have captured your friend <laughs> and your large flying cow. We have much to discuss. Flying cow. Yeah. <laughs> I think there is much for us to discuss. Your friend said that you had been seeking the Sun Warriors. Rejoice. You have found us. Yes. So you weren't behind that door? No. We are not. But we have had to go into hiding out. following the Fire Nation's aggressive expansion. Their attacks on our people. It was best to disappear rather than try and stand up to such violence. Well, you're not the only ones anymore. <laughs> Shut up. Come, leave this chamber behind, and I would ask that you do your best to forget it ever existed. Done. <laughs> <laughs> give, me like, give me like two minutes, I'll forget. <laughs> As the figures turn and begin walking back out into the light, do you guys follow away from the sunstone chamber? Yeah, yeah, hey. that's convincing. We know the, we know the secret code. Can we try to memorize the dance? Back in. Can we memorize the dance? Can we memorize the dance? Um, I mean, <laughs> I, you don't I have guess... any time to practice it. Yeah, like, like, I already tried it before. Any way that you're going to remember it? I'll get you I both to. Both of you can push your luck. Yes. Let's go, baby. Just walking behind them. Have you ever learned any kind of dance in your life? Can you learn it in like? Two minutes yes, I by have. I'll be honest. I'll be I actually honest. have. I learned my wedding dance in like a day. Yeah, a full nice. day. No, no, no. Like, like three. But three by practicing runs-throughs. it, right? By doing the movements, not just seeing them. Yeah, menu, menu, menu. I got twelve, baby. Uh, that's I hate this so both much. of you with an absolute yeah. success. Uh, I hate it. Rather <laughs> disappointingly. Um, yes. yes. <laughs> Why yeah, does this me... work out for them? When you're Only for they never work. bust out when it's like really useful. Oh, maybe <laughs> yeah. not. When it benefits others, the roles aren't there. <laughs> yeah, given given that Akilah had a bit of a chance to go through the motions marker you had before, they're not that complicated. The movements you well, think don't, you don't can take memorize. This away them. from us. I'm taking it away from you. You think you could probably you could replicate this if you needed to. You probably want to practice it before it fades out of your memory. At the moment, it's very, very, it's, it's very much in your short term. Memory. As we're walking, you can't behind. practice it as you're walking. You practice, hey, hey, you, you remember the first half? I remember I'll the second half. No, I'll practice the arm parts, not the leg parts. The, the arms are up and down. That's the only option. Or out Ooh, to the I don't side. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm pretty sure. sure the arm part was the least useful part of the whole dance. <laughs> you remember that it was your foot positions that. Uh, <laughs> activated the, the uh, pressure pads um as all of you begin following you can see that the two figures accompanying this this first sun warrior who spoke to you are both um very strong muscular men the figure in front is revealed to be a woman 
easily as buff as the two men, the spear carried over her shoulder. And you watch as she summons a small flame into her hands and holds it up, the flame changing colors slightly to a much lighter yellow. And down below in the courtyard, you see three more figures emerge from two of the side buildings. Same little flame signal rising up. Oh, you can make yellow ones. The woman turns towards you. Of course. How little you know of the true power of firebending. I can only do blue. As you say that you can only do blue, there's a sudden pause as the two guards behind you stop. The woman squints as if summing you up. (laughs) I don't believe you. One sec. Go 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 on, do it now. Give me a moment. (laughs) <laughs> impressive. Every uh, other time you've tried to do this, you failed. Uh, okay. I, to, I have to just be, be gentle and calm. You have to That's be harmonious. Could you please roll me with harmony, please, Marco? Oh, I can make blue as well. Oh, baby. Water. That's everything not what important. What is happening tonight with you and your roles? I hate it. What did you get? Another 12? <laughs> 10. It's another 10. Oh, yeah. Marco, maybe it's the situation... Maybe it's the stress. Maybe Maybe it's it's just the The time is right. Maybe it's Maybelline. As you call a small flame into your hands and begin... Maybe it's Maybelline. As you call a small flame (laughs) into your hands and begin passing it back and forward between your left and right hand, focusing, you watch as the flame slowly bleeds, turning from this bright orange red into a cool blue until you're holding this small blue flame in your arms. The woman mouth open surprise looks towards you perhaps i underestimated you interloper if you have already been able to correctly what's the first time i've heard that (laughs) if you are able to summon the blue flames either you are a prodigy of unusual skill or you have moved beyond calling upon anger to fuel your flame You have fueled your flame from a place of calm, serenity. That that, that helps, yes. I thought the Fire Nation had turned its back on such abilities, on such source. It was a whole whole journey and involved like some fish and stuff. Um, But yeah, I've moved past it, I think, maybe. Not quite, it's like not fully, it's like more of like a... Still there, still going on the journey, still, still on the ride. I am surprised, young one. Perhaps there is hope for you, after all. Not according to his card reading. Yeah, like I got like two days. <laughs> Fortune telling is the stuff of the mad and foolish. To believe that your future can be determined by cards or bones or dice. Oh no, no, this is by spirits. Spirits. You've mentioned spirits twice now. What do you know of spirits? Shut up. Shut up. Why me? Fingers on my nose right now. (laughs) The woman turns and looks between you. You, boy, you were the one who brought them up. Tell me, what do you know of spirits? I'm the one who fricked up. Um, so, like, uh, we, I know just know there's four, like, with this, the four, like, major ones. Like, we've seen, like, three of them. They're kind of angry at the world because of how everything's happening. Stuff happened. And we're going on a journey to calm down. And we just need to find the, the, the fire spirit. The dragon. So yep. you, you four and your airbender friend, the five of you are the ones the spirits have chosen to. Bring we balance to the world. Damn. With the avatar no longer here. Word. We, uh, oh, my ego. We remember what the Fire Nation have forgotten. This is not the first time the four primal spirits, earth, air, fire, and water, have awoken. Nor will it be the last. You are just the most you recent are... travelers you on are... this journey. <laughs> Not my fault. Sun warriors remember. We remember the ancient histories. We remember what has come before. If you are the ones... Who else remembers? Oh, was that, sorry? Would you say? 
So do you know who else, who else remembers? Pepperidge Farm remembers. Pepperidge Farm remembers. Oh my god. As <laughs> I'm going to assume this whole time you've sort of still been following along. As you get back towards Arl, you can see that he is standing in front of Mango a little bit protectively. Around him are six figures, each with spears, looking. He's, he's the most dangerous one of us all. He is, yeah. Um, looking a little bit confused <laughs> as to how to contain Mango. I mean, Mango's a big sky bison. Mango raises her tail every so often a little bit aggressively, looking around, like checking that these figures aren't going to hurt her. And each time she does so, sort of turning to keep them in, in view, the sun warriors shy back a little bit before moving forwards again with their spears. The woman, as she approaches, holds her hands up, clenches it into a fist, and lowers it across her chest. At that signal, you watch as all of the warriors immediately raise their spears and then stand much more at ease, backing off a little bit and moving away from Arl and Mango. As she moves over to Arl, gestures for you with, to, to follow with her head sort of nudging towards where Arl is standing. Arl looks towards you guys and goes, They haven't hurt me. I'm okay. Are you guys okay? Have you hurt them? You didn't gaslight no. anyone, did you? No. Emotionally? No. I don't do okay. that. <laughs> how, how dare you suggest that? That's emotional abuse to suggest such a thing. Oh, As he immediately God. begins gaslighting. Right. Um, right. no, no, no. <laughs> the woman. You're right, I'm sorry. Why do I think that? <laughs> the woman turns towards the, the the other warriors around her. Now all nine of them are ranged around her. The the three that were are moving up from the the courtyard below oh, and the God. six that were already there. She nods. It's hard to believe, but these five are here. They are the ones to appease the dragon spirit. Go. Oh. Ready provisions for them. We will leave immediately to take them to the area. Oh, thank God. Are we important? The area. Are, are we? Uh, as you, as you ask that ready. question, are we important? The woman turns around towards you. Yes, you are. Fate has chosen you to appease the spirits. I'm so glad you don't ask How many have equation. you already dealt with? Like, all but one. Like five. All three are appeased. It's <laughs> just the spirit of fire remaining. Yeah, yes. plus a couple yep. other just spirits. Uh, like, plus a couple extras. Like, we, 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 we found time. Then you already know wow. of the gifts of the spirits. Some of you have Your been touched by them, blessed by their powers. Um, essentially. Uh, essentially. <laughs> I would know which among you has already been touched by a spirit. Kila puts his hands up. I'll raise his hand. I put, I put two hands up. I put yeah. two hands up. Oh, I, I thought she, was trying to make... she could tell who has. No, yeah, no, she's, she's asking who, who has. And then I'd like, try to rub my fingers together to make a bit of static. Yeah, a little bit of static crackles between your fingers. Well, you are the last one, Earthbender. You will be the one to appease the spirit of fire. Tips? What was that? Any More tips? than the tip. More Any tips? The tips. <laughs> <laughs> we will prepare you as best we can. Unlike the other spirits, you're going to need to prove yourself in combat against the dragon spirit. This is not how a How do simple... you know how he appeased the other spirits? <laughs> the spirit of air is appeased with music. Spirit of water with ice, skill. The spirit of earth with a show of her heroism. It's it is written, actually... so it always has been. How Power for did... fire. Combat involved? How did we actually which get rid of one? The... Actually, which one? How did we beat one. the water spirit? I can't remember. I don't remember ago. the water you, spirit. You calmed it and you, you essentially, like, you, yeah. you approached it, you. you de-escalated the violence and you and you like, oh, essentially yeah, what, you, what you demonstrated was yeah. going with the flow else is like no 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 yeah. so it's it's great that i can finally reveal this but yeah each each of the spirits is appeased with essentially the the um i guess like the feature of the bending technique that it most represents so for air it was all about like avoiding the storm being quick and light and being able to to get in and get close and then appease it with music much like airbenders tend to be very light on their feet, very quick, very um, reactive, very good at maneuvering. With water, it was all about going with the flow, slowing down, calming and aligning yourself to it, moving with it. For stone, it was about being steadfast and firm, standing up to the danger, facing it head on. With fire, it's all about power. Well, good luck, Ron. <laughs> like, both arms. 
wrong. Got we got this. Oh, we can do this. What do you mean we? It's him. Him alone. Oh, no. yeah, you I will not be well. able to do this alone. All of you be required. Oh yeah, but... I'm, f I'm fighting. Yeah, I'm no. not going mano a mano against a dragon, let alone a spirit dragon. So you guys are with me here. <laughs> Wait, do you think this will count as like uh, getting the title? We will take no. you into the city. <laughs> uh, as you mentioned the title, as you mentioned the title, yeah. all of them Fuck. spit and glare at you, Marco. I was gonna say, why would you mention we're, that we're, here? We're reforming him slowly but surely. <laughs> Good. Those who hunt dragons are filth, the lowest form of man. Unless they grab Marco's ear spirits. and pull him towards me downwards, like. Shut up. You won't be hunting the dragon spirits. You will be demonstrating your control of your powers, your techniques. You'll be demonstrating control of yourself. Fire consumes unless you are strong enough to contain it. You must show that you can contain power, that you can hold it, manage it, direct it without hurting yourself or those around you. Come, we will lead you into the city and prepare you as best we can. Sun warriors, remember. We adhere to the ancient pact we made to guide those on their journey to appease the spirits when next they wake. This is the most helpful town we have ever Yeah, this found. is the, like they're way too helpful. It's actually concerning. It's we've been honest with these people and been helpful. It's not related, I'm sure. I we've been honest with other people and been enslaved. Us. Yeah, we got we got like attacked on sight. As the sun warriors begin forming up into two lines of soldiers and begin marching into the city, the woman gestures for you to follow. I am Kura, speaker of the sun warriors. I will journey with you to face the spirit, but I cannot face it with you. But if you are in danger, I will do my best to protect you as my grandfather's oh. grandfather did before. Sure, five, ge five generations ago, if you're trying yeah, to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like, <laughs> great, great. yeah. Five generations. I love that, watching you guys try to figure stuff out. <laughs> with that, Kura leads you down into the city. And that is where we're going to wrap up for tonight. Oh. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. That is all we have time for tonight. Don't panic, don't worry. We still have one more session this week. Return of the Giants is back tomorrow night and we are going to be having a very, very exciting session. That is it for us for Avatar Legends though. We will be back next week with more Avatar Legends next Tuesday. Until then, stay safe, stay well. Dave will, we will be there. see you all again later. What was that, sorry? Dave will, Dave be, will there. be there. Dave will be there. Maybe. No, 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 Maybe. no, no, no. He will be. He will be. Um, uh, there's plans in motion. <laughs> If you're yeah. watching us on Twitch, don't go anywhere. We're going to go and raid one of our, our other lovely, friendly channels. Let me see who we can go raid. Uh, ooh, Fate Script or Crit and a Miss. Oh, let's go Crit and a Miss. It's been a while since we raided Crit and a Miss, and they've, they need some extra they need some extra viewers to go help them out. Alrighty. Everybody, thank you so much. If you're watching on YouTube or listening on the podcast, remember, hit that subscribe button or thumbs up button on YouTube. We're so close to the 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. It'd be amazing if we could hit that uh, by the end of November. That would be so cool. Everyone who's already hit it, thank you, you bloody legends. Um, for those listening on a podcast, if there's a way to leave a review, do it. I know some podcast platforms don't let you do that, but if it's on Spotify or iTunes, I'm pretty sure you can. So if, if you can leave a review, that would be amazing and really help us out. From all of us here tonight, thank you so much for tuning in and listening, and we will see you all again really, really soon. But until then, stay safe, stay well, and we'll see you all again soon. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. I love you all. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>